This is the Hollywood Outsider Weekly Movie and TV Podcast from the new episode every Thursday. This is episode 148, and this week we are discussing upcoming releases including The Purge, Anarchy, and Sex Tape, spoiler-free reviews of Deliver Us from Evil and Snowpiercer, and we're going to briefly weigh in on Transformers since we weren't here last week, but we won't review that whole thing because you don't want 15 minutes of a movie you've probably already seen twice. Our From the Outside In topic this week, the raunchy comedy. Is there still a place for them? Latest movie and TV news, including our own trivia segments. My name is Aaron Peterson, and with me today are my fellow hosts, Scotty Clark. Greetings, Aaron. <laughs> well, greetings, sir. Justin McCumber. Salutations, Aaron. And Brian Williams. What's up? What's up? Oh, God, you all did it. Hey. Uh, remember when that was funny? Wait, it still oh, is. No, <laughs> no, it's not. What has everybody been up to? What's been going on? Anybody do anything cool for the 4th? We were off last week, so this is after the 4th. I went to a drive-in theater with some jerk. Yeah, I almost got thrown out of the drive-in. <laughs> you did? <laughs> what did you do? Uh, oh, my gosh. Long story. Long story. He... Does it involve you mooning someone? No, no, no. no. I wasn't. Uh, well, I might have had some popcorn and did something. Or bro- well, anyway. Uh, my, uh, the manager came up to our car cause it was running and tried to tell my wife to turn the car off and did not like identify himself or anything. And basically it was just like a creepy guy wrapping on the window of wife. My wife's alone in the car cause I was over talking to Scott cause I left her. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, so I went over and had words and then after he got cocky, I got cocky and then he identified himself. And by then I was already gone. So <laughs> we just had words. It worked out. It was a happy time. Probably not for him, but he stole my Diet Coke. So what, what, what movie was it? Seat. What's that? What movie was it? Uh, that was for I'm, assu- I'm assuming it was a movie you've already seen before. It was, well, we saw, trans- this was in between the movies. It was um, 20, Transformers and 22 Jump Street. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. 22 Jump Street was a lot funner than I was expecting. Huh. Were people still hanging around after three hours of Transformers? Yeah, surprisingly. Yeah. The, uh, the, cre- the creepy manager was <laughs> wrapping on my window and stealing my Diet Coke. <laughs> but she gave I mean, that. How did he steal your Diet Coke? That's the creepier part. That's what I'm trying to... Okay, if you want to hear the whole story. So so then I, I go up to the car and I'm like, hey, guy, what are you, what are you doing? You know, you're, you're talking to my wife, telling her to turn the car off and telling her what's what. He hasn't identified himself. She didn't know who he was. I don't know who he is. He doesn't say, hey, guess what? I'm Bob, the theater manager. He goes, hey, is that Diet Coke in your back seat? And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> Is now, that a euphemism now, I'm not aware of? That... <laughs> Keep in mind, it's sealed. I, they have a buy food from there. And I was mostly respecting that policy. Mostly. mostly. I bought a drink from them. I didn't, I didn't open that. It was sealed and everything Says else. Says the guy with a big cooler and a portable <laughs> microwave in his back seat. <laughs> Well, anyway, one of those and yet, and yet, barbecues. Yeah. <laughs> and what's his what's his motto? Buy popcorn. Yeah. What a dick. I did. <laughs> dick. Ass kick. I bought popcorn. I bought snacks. I bought a pop. I bought it all. Anyway, and then he's like, "Well, I'm, can I take that and I'll hold it and I'll give it to you when the movie's over?" Still hasn't said. Hey, guess what? I manage this theater. And now you can go with. Well, I assume. But if you saw him, no, you wouldn't. You do not assume. So I said, well, he is the guy that sold me my ticket. So I wasn't in your line, chief. So I, a little sixteen-year-old girl sold me mine. Probably the line you preferred to be in. Did so, you buy them in the car? What's that? Was he was Scotty in your car? He was in the car next to me. Oh, okay. A- anyway, it ended up we shook. Well, we didn't shake hands, but we worked it out, and I, I enjoyed the next film stewing in my car. Did you get your diet coat back? Uh, yeah, I did. Yep, sure did. This is America. <laughs> that would be the most awkward conversation to have. Can I uh, have, can I confiscate your food, please? It would have no. been fine if you would have said, "Hey, I work for the drive-in, and I'm going to have to take that." Cause you invest in some polo shirts or something. Yeah, some, <laughs> wear a name tag. Do you have a yeah, badge? I, was say a name, I mean, he didn't have a name tag or anything. Nope. No, no lanyard, nothing. Anybody else do anything besides my drama? Wow, nothing that Re- exciting. Recorded a podcast. Oh yeah, you did that, Michael Bay. There was more explo- There was almost as many explosions than that as there were at the drive-in. <laughs> who who did he do that commercial for? Where he kept talking about how awesome he liked things. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember who it was, but I remember the commercial. Yeah, to me that was one of those moments where I'm like, yeah, all right, he's not too bad a guy. He he obviously knows 
this is his reputation and he's just fine with it. So fuck it. And uh, did anybody do any actually go anywhere? Do anything? No, my dogs get really afraid when fireworks go off. So we stay home and, and tend to them because they need caring for. I had to go downtown and watch a parade. I, I wish I could understand the appeal of parade. It feels like a bunch of people watching traffic. That's yeah. It is yeah, pretty parades much are dumb. I, I just don't get it. Especially because like they're a product of a bygone era that we're all kind of past now. Uh, well, the number of why people local downtown parades would... are awful. I mean, they're like some guy put together the crappiest float he could, slapped on a banner with whatever his firehouse name is. It's mostly politicians in, in, yeah, it's... in ours. It's like, uh, I, don't, I don't see the, the only to parades me. they should allow anymore: Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, Victoria's and Mardi Secret. Gras. Oh, and that's fucking it. Yeah. Did you say Victoria's Secret? Yes. Victoria's Secret. <laughs> this is Victoria's Secret's parade. Either way, right, you got well, some, Victoria's either way, you got some big parade. old balloons. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, guys, we're coming up on our... I'm sure everybody's like, are you ever going to talk about movies? Um, We're coming up to our 150th episode. That means three years. One, two, three. Actually, it's, wouldn't 153? I fucking nickel. It's yeah. pretty much 150. Really? It's an even number. That's where we're going with. I don't want to have to go through 156. That just seems so complicated. <laughs> 150 is nice and round, and that's, you know, well, that's good. Well, we miss a couple episodes each year for holidays, so. There you go. See? Uh-huh. Justin's got it covered. <laughs> what do you, should we do anything special? Is there anything special we should do? Wait no? until 200, I think. Yeah, that's what I say. Okay. That's I'm looking forward to the 300th it. episode. Then we're going Spartan on this bitch. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I'm still catching flack for 100. I want to give it a little bit, <laughs> a few more weeks. He's going to start drinking now. <laughs> yeah, I'm, you know, I, I, it's still too soon. Still too soon. You know, still I had, had somebody ask me the other day, like, what episode should I go back and listen to? And I said, episode 100, Brian was hammered. The, <laughs> the two most downloaded unrecent episodes, or non-recent, however you put that, would be the 100th, Drunk Brian, and the pilot, which... I, nobody yeah. should really listen to that one. Yeah, yeah, that was when we were. That sounded terrible. Everybody's on a different level, literally. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> one's yeah. far away, one's really close. We're, we can't get it figured out. Were we sitting like on a card table or something too? Like I don't just, remember what it was. It was it's like we were not well done. It's yeah. horribly done. That's like watching like the original the the very first Seinfeld episode. Oh, that whole season is is hard to watch. <laughs> it's just you know it's. Ugh. We were good by like nine or ten. So you know, eight or eight or nine, six. Whenever we started having guests, let's put it there because I don't want to. Nine or ten months later, we were good. We're better. <laughs> we had, we were having like Brian corrected. He's like, we're still not good. <laughs> <laughs> we had like four flashbacks every episode. Do you remember that? Yeah, everybody. Yeah, that was, was my genius idea. All right. Did you hear while we were out that Mark Wahlberg and The Rock both might have new franchises? I heard about Mark Wahlberg. I didn't hear he might be the $6 million man, and then The Rock is looking at being the Jansen directive. It's some new, some series the from 12, the... The $12 million man? <laughs> <laughs> he would be really expensive. Whatever happened to Spy Hunter? That fell through. That's done. I done. never heard about that, but it just, in, from where I was sitting, it just seemed to kind of disappear quietly. I, I never really heard anything about it. But yeah, that was years ago. I just, for some reason, thought of it. Well, the Jansen Directive is written by the born writer, Robert uh, Ludlum. So that could be something interesting. He's too big to move like a born character. (laughs) Well, he's too huge to be a discreet, you know, covert operative. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) When he he goes around the corner, we're like, holy shit. The corner falls down. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) He's kind of hard to hide. (laughs) He breaks off a piece of it as he comes around. (laughs) See, I don't know if I want Mark Wahlberg being uh, Steve Majors. Is that what I think? Yeah, I think he's, I, I, hey, how's your mother? <laughs> Say hello to your mother for me. I think Wahlberg's been in enough stuff. He doesn't need that. <laughs> I could more see The Rock as a $6 million man because he does look like he's made out of steel and, and wires. Yeah, but the guy in the TV show wasn't like a huge guy, was he? Oh, uh, Lee Majors? No. That's what no, it was. Not it was really. Lee Majors. No, I mean, nobody was except for Lou Ferrigno back then. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's true. true. It wasn't, they didn't have as many uh, performance enhancing drugs. <laughs> Not that The Rock takes him. I'm sure he's normally that huge. Uh, one big thing that I thought was really interesting is that the box office this summer is down literally 20% from last year. Do you guys think that's because this summer is just not as good as last summer or past summers? Yes. How, 
Explain. Elaborate. Well, last summer we had quite a few, and then the summer before that, we we had a lot more films that kept me coming to the theater. But you know, this year when we did our you know films we want to see during the summer, it seemed like I had a long list that I wanted to see. Yet it's you know coming up on the middle of Ju- July, and I don't feel like I've seen that many. Yet I've seen everything I intended to see. It's I don't know. It just this summer kind of feels a bit lackluster. I feel like there's a lot more yet to come. I Planet of the Apes. I think it's gonna be huge. Um, Guardians of the Galaxy. There's a lot of really big ones coming yet that I think are gonna that should more than make up for that. Yeah, I, I think I think it is. I think part of the reason why though is we and we almost complained about it last year. And that was literally every single weekend there was a huge tentpole movie being opened up. And mm-hmm. it, it really hurt a lot of those larger titles like Lone Ranger and uh, what Battleship, I think, was in there too or something no, like that. that was two but years ago. Battleship was the one. Was it? Yeah. It feels like yesterday. But anyway. <laughs> but, it, but it did. The point is is that it, it, it really kind of it seemed to hurt a number of these that, that would probably do well if it was one of the top, say, five or six opening over the summer. But mm-hmm. when there was a huge one every single weekend, it really, you know, I can't see this season this year being anything but down from last year. Well, plus 4th of July was on a Friday this year. And 4th of July is normally like a huge movie weekend, right? It is. It does take away from and that. Most that's not 20%. I think it's just... Well, I mean, it's yeah, one weekend, but yeah. I mean, that's that could be a big part of it. That's a big part. I think there's just a lot of retreads. There really weren't too many movies that people were just raving about. Mm-hmm. I think maybe Edge of Tomorrow, X Men, Days of Future Past, and that's really been about it. I mean, some of the other ones have hit, like Twenty Two Jump Streets, done well and stuff. But How to Train Your Dragon really is kind of a flop mm-hmm. compared to where I mean, it's not even going to make what the first movie we made. And Edge of Tomorrow is really not done well here. It's done fine overseas. And then Spider Man, two hundred, just barely make two hundred million, which is the lowest grossing of all of them. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's just, you know, I I think maybe, and if you look back at our scores stuff, just from our reviews, much lower than last year. Mm -hmm. So I think there's a lot better product. Well, we do have the Guardians of the Galaxy coming. For me, that is the saving grace of this summer. Aren't you calling it best movie of the year? Damn near, yeah. Mm -hmm. Everything I see, it looks more and more awesome. It seems to have just about the best soundtrack of the year, that's for sure. Oh, yeah. The music works so well in those trailers. Ooga, 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 uh, I'm still going with Dawn and the Planet of the Apes. I think that just looks fantastic. Mm, I do, too. Me, I, too. I just watched I think three. it looks fine. I don't know if you mass didn't... audiences are ready for horse-riding apes. <laughs> we'll just have to see. But we can handle, like, gun-toting raccoons? Yeah. <laughs> Hells to the yes. <laughs> Talking trees? <laughs> The, Again, yes. That, here's that a, shoot guns. Here's the cool thing about Planet of the Apes that amazes me. I just watched the other one last night, actually, the, the 2011 mm-hmm. one, and they had a trailer for it on TV after we got done watching, and it was insane how much more detailed it looks after just three years. The monkey work? The, mon- the monkey work, yes. The monkey face? It Did looks- you guys watch any of the, the prequels for that? The little mini, the little yes. short films? Yes, I did. Like the fill in the gaps? Oh, I didn't, I didn't know that it existed. Yep, they were on Entertainment Weekly. I'll oh, send you the link. Yeah. Cool. It's good stuff, man. I'm, it gets me more pumped. Can't yeah, the, the first two were okay. The last one was, was better than the other two. But, um, but yeah, it was a good little uh, little filler. Hmm. I, I think those two movies combined, plus Expendables 3 and that awesomeness, you know, will help, uh, help sell, save the uh, box office. Let's go into a couple of big things. Disney is now developing a live-action Dumbo movie. Justin, do you think they're going... When they also have, Well, you can explain what the other ones are, but do you think they're going a little crazy remaking all of their classics live-action? Yes. I mean, <clears throat> they already started it off with Alice in Wonderland, which for them was a, was a big hit. And then they did Maleficent, which is a spinoff of Sleeping Beauty, but still close enough. And it's done pretty well. And they've got coming up in March next year, they've got Cinderella, which I didn't know that was directed by Kenneth Branagh. Now I'm mm-hmm. kind of a little more curious to to hear about that. And John Favreau is doing The Jungle Book, and then Bill Condon is doing Beauty and the Beast. So we, we have three live-action remakes of cartoons coming up 
two of them already have been done and we've got another one now on the way with Dumbo. It, it does seem like Disney, do you not have any more ideas? Mm -hmm. Is there nothing new in your, you know, your stable of projects that you can't be working on as opposed to just doing a live action version of one of your films? Admittedly, Dumbo, I, I'm a little curious about because it is a story of a, of a tiny, of a little elephant with these big old ears and he learns how to fly. So there is a certain element of that CG created character that I'm curious to see how they're going to pull it off. But Jungle Book, Beauty and the Beast, Cinderella, none of those really do anything for me personally. So therefore, my opinion is, Puh. I know. No, I mean, seriously speaking, it does seem like they're dipping into the well way too much. I have a hard time imagining in my head what that movie would look like. I I I, I hear flying animal and I'm I have visions of underdog. Remember that movie mm -hmm. where they just had a dog like laying down and it made it look like he was flying? <laughs> I'm I'm still I'm still stuck on where else you would imagine it other than your head. <laughs> I, I just don't know who they just throw them in the air. I don't know who this audience would be for. I, I, I'd be well, kids, family, oh, kids, definitely. Yeah. I mean, what they can do with CGI these days is absolutely ridiculous. Like you guys were just talking about with the improvement between what was it, apes. Rising Dawn of Apes, and now we've got Dawning Rise of Apes. Um, they can do some really incredible stuff. So I'm sure that this flying elephant will look like a goddamn flying elephant. Uh, and this is a short. Or the uh, original animated movie was their shortest. It's like an hour. Film. Mm -hmm. It was like 64 minutes. So I'm curious what they may add on because ain't no way Disney's going to put out a 64 minute live action Dumbo. They're going to have to be adding to that one. So I'm kind of curious what material they're going to draw from there. I'm more concerned with the actual animated films because anytime you remake something or sequelize something, you dilute the original property. And to me, that, you know, yeah, we don't like, you know, we get tired of sequels and remakes and reboots and there's always an audience that hasn't seen it, blah, 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 blah. But for me, Disney animation cartoons, animated cartoons are kind of some of those rare films that should be left alone, mm -hmm. I think. Oh, yeah. They're, yeah, they're one of the few things out there that are kind of sacred. Yeah, I mean, look at Lion King, and I know Justin, you haven't seen it, so you don't know what I'm talking about, but Lion King was a fantastic movie, and then they decided to churn out a couple of crappy animated sequels, and for me, because I had to watch them because I had kids, it really diluted the original for me, and anytime this kind of thing happens, it really dilutes the original for me, it takes away some of that charm, some of that um, nostalgia, you know, I hate to say it, and I realize that people, well, you know, some, you let your personal stuff go. But I think I do believe there are some films that should just be left alone, mm -hmm. and some of those classics, I firmly believe that. But what do what, I know? What if the pink elephants will be in the new one? <laughs> Maybe that's, that scared the crap out of me as a kid. <laughs> it's kind of creepy. Yeah, just elephants flying in general is not. <laughs> it breeds nightmares. It really does. I can see it being popular though. With we talk about how people are all you know, with the the anti cruelty to animals kind of thing. That's like a big thing people care about animals and movies more than people mm -hmm. so that <laughs> just like sure. justin you're gonna bring up your personal personal <laughs> topic it's gonna it, but that'll make it i'm just staying out i'm not taking this fucking bait <laughs> it's cgi man it, it'll be cgi it won't be like a real elephant no i understand that no no no, no. i'm not saying that i'm saying that that will help it sell is people like to see you know the retribution for that kind of thing because that's part of the movie is they chain up the elephants oh and yeah I see what torture them and that kind of thing and then you know they get back at them and shoot peanuts at the the ringmaster or whatever. Peanuts and are... maybe they can maybe they can kind of alter that to where like guns flop drop out from underneath his ears when they're spread. And, <laughs> you know, like maybe he gets... big missiles that shoot out. Maybe turn maybe his trunk up. into a Gatlin gun. Mm, I like maybe, it. Maybe blow up a uh, famous politician in a soccer stadium or something. I don't know. And that leads us right into our know, next should, topic. Uh, I don't know. They should have this take place in Chicago and blow the fuck out of that city again. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, Michael Bay likes to do yeah, it. Cause it. That's never been done. <laughs> uh, the Expendables 3, which comes out in August, was recently rated PG-13. Now, the first two movies were rated R, and Stallone went on record to say he wanted as many people to see this as possible. We, we've seen a couple other R-rated franchises do this, like Die Hard, and some people just lose their minds when this happens. Brian, does this 
bother you? Does it change how much you want to see the movie or does it turn you off or do you really don't care? Really? It, I really don't care. Now I think there are certain, certain movies, certain properties that if you're teetering between PG 13 and R, I believe R would work better. Um, Wolverine being one of those. <laughs> yeah. I just, I've, we talked about that a while back, but I think that would work. I think that would work as an R rating. This, I just don't, I don't think it does. I don't think it really affects it too much. Uh, if he wants to slap PG-13 on it and try to get a broader audience, fine. Go ahead. I don't think that demographic, though, that he's trying to reach, that, that extra few thousand people that, you know, that he opens it up to, I don't think that's the market, though. I think the, I the main people who are going to see this are the people who remember seeing these people right. 20 years ago in their heyday, mm -hmm. 30 years ago. So, okay, fine. And the, the violence, it's all moving so fast and thing, you know, walls blow up, cars blow up. You don't really see dismemberment very much. You don't see massive amounts of blood and gore. It's just, it's almost like, uh, it's really, it's almost like the 18 back, you know. 30 years ago where a lot of people are dying and you see a couple of graphic things though, but for the most part, it's not too bad. There's not a whole lot of language. I'm fine with a PG 13 rating. I'm fine with an R rating if they want to go that way. But these, the first two movies were rated R and they didn't seem too much worse than a PG 13. So eh, whatever. I'm not as big a fan of the franchise as you guys are. I enjoy them. I just I'm don't, sorry. I don't love them like you guys do. You're stupid. I, it's okay. I, I it, it seems like the R rating is kind of we the, respect your wrongness. Kind of the draw, isn't it? I mean, it is. It is part of it for a lot of people. I it mean, is. that's what the eighties those eighties movies that all those guys were in. It's all R rated movies back in back in the well, day. Well, yeah, right? back then it didn't matter. You right, know, you could go buy a ticket and do an R rated movie if you were twelve. They didn't care. Mm -hmm. All these stupid rules and politicians bringing the man down. And I'll tell you that whatever they rate this movie is not affecting how awesome that trailer looks. I I was like kind of lackluster in the first two, but that this third one looks really fun. It looks really awesome. I, I, I think it really doesn't matter as much anymore. There are so many. I, I know that they want to reach the widest audience possible. And the, the second movie dipped a little bit. It made almost as much as the first one, but it dipped a little bit. So they're trying to get more tickets sold. I get it. But there's so much they can do in a PG-13 movie now. Mm -hmm. I mean, they get so visceral, so violent nowadays. I honestly can rarely tell the difference anymore except for language or sex between an R and a PG-13. So I don't mm -hmm. really think it matters as much as some people are losing their minds. I'm not one of them. Right. And I'll just buy the unrated DVD when it comes out or Blu-ray or digital copy or whatever we're up to by that point. So It'll just come in a syringe at that point. You just shoot it in your arm and then you watch it by yourself. Ooh. Google Glass. You'll have like little Google Glass expendables. It's, Google, glasses. it's like Amazon Blood. <laughs> they just squirt it in you. It takes place in your brain. You watch it. Nobody. You don't have to bother anybody else. So that would be so loud in your head. Justin, does this kind of thing bother you? You were kind of quiet. No, I mean we've had this topic before, and these days PG thirteen is so close to R that it's almost ridiculous that we still have a division. And like, for this movie, I, I don't care. Now, what about 600 million bucks that AMC is dropping into the theaters to renovate them with recliner seating? Is it worth it to you? A, is it worth it to you to have recliner seating to go to the, when you go to the theater? And would you pay extra if you have to for those seats? Cause they're going to charge, they're going to charge a premium. Well, you ask me, is it worth it to me? Like, to my current ticket price, is it worth it, or what do you mean? Ticket price right now is ten bucks. They uh -huh. add recliner seats; it's going to go up to thirteen bucks. Is that three bucks worth it to you to have recliner seating? Absolutely not. I'm absolutely I'm, yes. I'm I'm a total cheap bastard. I try to get my movie as cheap as possible. I I go to the matinees. I go to I don't remember the last time I paid for a full movie ticket price because I just I don't want to spend that kind of money there, and I go too often to have that big of a budget. For me, recliner is when I'm sitting at home in my home theater with my surround sound and I'm comfortable. I'm not in a public place. Put, there's something about putting your feet up. I, it drives me crazy when I'm in a theater and there's some dude in front of me that's got his feet like propped up on on the seat ahead of him. It just You're not at home. 
You know, I mean, if the recliner's there, it's fine. Use it, but that, to me, that that's that's a home. You'd rather feeling. leave the seats like they are now and pay the ten bucks than right. pay thirteen. I don't. I don't have a problem with it myself. If it's if it's going to affect my price, I don't want it. I'm not. I'm not going to pay extra if I have if I have a choice to go to a regular movie or go to one that has a recliner. I am not going to pay an extra three dollars to have a recliner. That's just ridiculous to me. And the the other thing is, it's a public place. How good a shape do you think those recliners are going to last with, <laughs> with people? I mean, th- they're yeah, going to have to. Every theater I go to, you got those sponge filled with a shag carpet stuff on the top. And then you, you mean that fart soaked cushion? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then you, you, know, you kind of shift in there and your arm sinks down into the armrest and, you know, and all that stuff's just, hey, give me some kind of vinyl or leather fake stuff that you can oh, wipe yeah, clean. Oh, yeah, so I can stick to it. That sounds sexy. <laughs> No, theaters are so cold, you ain't going to stick to it unless you're just, you know. <laughs> well, unless you're Aaron. Yeah, I go in there in my yeah. underwear. You just, oh, go there your coochie cutters? <laughs> yeah. What? Sitting there Al Bundy style with your hand all in your whitey tighties. <laughs> that's just at the kids' movies. Yeah, that's what I do for the kids' movies. So what about you two? Uh, yeah, Justin? I mean, I've been to a theater that's had recliners, and it was a luxurious experience. I highly recommend it. Uh, and I am, I am not a cheap ass. If it's three bucks and I get to sit in the most comfortable chair possible. Uh, I'm all for it. Yes. Yeah. I'm with Justin on that. Uh, if, if it was an opera, you know, if it was available in my area, which I think we, we just got fax machines last week down here. So, <laughs> um, I don't, I don't foresee this coming my way very soon. So, uh, <laughs> 15 minutes per page. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, this 56 K modem rocks. So much faster. Anyway, um, yeah, it's just one of those. It, I would. I I do enjoy my movie experience. I don't. Unfortunately, I don't check out two or three movies a week. But if uh, but I try to make a point to go see the the larger ones at least. And if I'm going to do that, why not? Why not make it as comfortable as possible? Especially I know Justin, for a said, long movie. Right, right. And Justin, I know you said you went to one that had even. Um, Gosh, what was it like? It like was reserved reserve, seating. Reserved seating. Mm-hmm. See, I would love, love that. Yep. Popcorn was provided, reserved seating, all recliners. It was it was expensive, but it was worth it. My wife and I really enjoyed that experience. And yep. if more theaters were to start adding, it doesn't even have to be reserved. As long as they had uh, more comfortable seating, I, 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 I would definitely take them up on that. I have been to a reserve seating. And personally, I don't yeah. like sweaty dude bros rubbing against my shoulder. But they're going to rub the against you me. anyway. It's not like they're going to you're going to have like a secluded recliner. You're still going to be well, next no, but to people. If you're sitting in a real recliner, no one should be close enough to you that their arms are rubbing yours. Yeah, there you're not playing good... that game. Whose elbow goes at the front of the armrest and whose elbow goes at the back? That's right. <laughs> you shouldn't be playing that game. I'm of the mindset that I I think it sounds nice. I've been in those theaters. They are very comfortable. If it's a buck or two, that's one thing. But if it's like five, six bucks a ticket, no, I, I don't need it. I, I'm, I'm kind of, I hate to say it, I'm with Scott on that one. I think that's, it's not worth it for the limited amount of time I'm there. But if it's only a couple bucks, it's absolutely worth it. So it's really a matter well, of you're not, how much are we talking. Well, you're not really seeing going to see a, night, a price increase until like a year later. Until like a year so later, yeah. So but by I that will time you'll kind of forget one. they actually did the upgrade, and you'll be like, holy crap, what do you mean it's $13 I'm going to forget. Scott's going to gonna remind me every time he goes to a theater. He's going to be like, I got to go to that goddamn movie. It's $3 extra. <laughs> what a cheap ass. <laughs> hey, it's budgeting. If, if you budget, I get it. It makes sense to me. Now, a listener who <laughs> asked to remain anonymous, well, that's fine, posed this question, spurred from our recent Michael Bay episode, Critics often refer to cinema, especially when they're knocking something they don't like. So how do we, the hoes, define cinema? Should there be a difference? I mean, in the writing world or in the book world, you know, there's there there's this thing called um, uh, not literature. It's uh, God damn. I just had the word in my head. A second ago, Ecclesiastical. and now it's completely run out. No, it's um, literary. Oh, if you are a literary, wow, I, thought, I was, I was kind of, I was kind of going for, kind of thinking to be a little bit more, yeah, difficult. No, word. no, not quite, not quite so, not quite so literal. literary. What's the word I'm writer, looking for? Art. <laughs> then that means you are a writer of, 
of high caliber and your stories are you usually it's it's put on people who write stories about people overcoming disease or addiction or troubled families it's it's for me it's a code word that means everything else is less than i mean if your book has a monster or a laser gun in it or a spy then that's not real literature only literary writers write that it's the same thing with movies you know criterion they only put out uh, dvds of cinema high qual you know high art films and for me that's just it's a bullshit definition movies are movies whether they're big blockbuster blow em ups or an art house piece they're all just movies and i am not going to allow someone to say that certain films are going to be considered cinema meaning lofty and then everything else is just well that's just a movie to me that's bullshit so i don't define it because i refuse to use it you goat man <laughs> Scotty? I, I pretty much agree. I, I wasn't even really realizing that we were looking at the difference in term between cinema and movie, but to me they're the same thing. Any, I, I gave it a real simple definition of any enjoyable audio vi video experience that you have in a theater. I mean, <laughs> real sounds, basic. Sounds good to me. What about you, Brian? Well, first of all, I have the Criterion Collection copy of Armageddon. <laughs> they did Armageddon? Oh, yes. yes. Yes, they did. Well, then I guess that yes, shoots your Criterion theory. <laughs> <Shit>. <laughs> but I I mean, I see cinema as, as it's an umbrella. I mean, it, it includes Casablanca and it includes Clerks. I mean, it includes, you know, it includes everything. So, I mean, from the from Dumb and Dumber to Citizen Kane, it includes everything. And. But in the way that critics use it, they use it as a snobby word to say some critics, hey, not all. Okay. Yeah. Well, the general nice. tone is, is, I mean, if they say this isn't great cinema, they're saying that something is not very up to their yeah, yeah. fish posh standards of, well, I spent $40,000 on an education where I get to watch foreign movies and blah, 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 blah. blah. I'm like yeah, well, I rented you know the same movie at Redbox for about two bucks. So, fuck off. <laughs> Cinema is oh. usually said with your nose up in the air. It is elective. Right. All my electives in college were were film classes, and trust me, they're not that much deeper than than at your average movie. It's more about shots and shadows and lighting and you know et cetera et cetera. But to wrap up my long winded point, apparently, it encompasses everything. I, I appreciate someone asking, I mean, how do we define cinema? It, literally, it's defined as the art of business of making films or films collectively. So that's what it is. When, when you hear critics that use it, which is what they were referring to, um, they're using it, using it uh, like Justin was alluding to. It's an elitist term. It's meant to say that what I like is better than what you like. And it's not a term I'm particularly fond of because I think it it's just like it creates separation for no reason other than to – Offer the air that I am better than you or smarter than you or just everything I do is better than you. That's really what my it, job is to critique <laughs> movies. So therefore, I know more than you. And if I tell you this is a crappy movie, mm -hmm. you should. Whatever. Do what I say and not watch it. And and that's just, I mean, ridiculous. A, a good critic will be very open minded, which we talked about in the Michael Bay thing. A good critic will be very open minded. And also writes to his audience, not at his audience. You know, you will see some critics. There's some I can't stand who decide to use every single word they can find in a thesaurus because it makes them seem so much smarter and more educated than everybody else. I, I can name 10 right off the top of my head. But they're... Would you like to <laughs> elucidate your right point? Here. I would not. I would not. Because, uh, you know. But honestly, if they if you like movies, you like cinema. That's the way I look at it. Welcome to Brian's Trailer Park. All right, Andre Benjamin, aka Andre Three Thousand from Outcast, plays a scary likeness of the Jimi Hendrix in the biopic entitled "Jimmy All Is By My Side." Uh, Jimmy documents the life of the legendary left-handed guitar god before he became famous. 
Scotty, what'd you think about this one there? Oh, I thought this trailer looked really good. Andre Benjamin is playing Jimi Hendrix, and if you're not familiar with Andre Benjamin, he's he's in the is it R and B or rap? Is that considered rap? Outcast. Yeah. He's he's Brian half. said that. Yeah. Um, sorry, I mi- must have missed over that. I ignore Brian most of the time too. <laughs> Brian would have just called it black music. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he he looks to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Eric. <laughs> See, ahead. if we weren't recording, I would probably play off that joke, but I just don't know. There's way too many people listening that could. Yep. That you may, never know that what may get it. it. But, right, <laughs> exactly. And the way Aaron edits, you don't know how that's going to come out. <laughs> I'll make it a loop. Anyway, Andre Benjamin looks to have pulled off Jimmy better than than any other actor has done the musician since, uh, since uh, Val Kilmer to Jim Morrison. Like, you know well, that, I think that's a bold statement, sir. Oh, oh man, he he just looks and feels like and sounds like Jimi Hendrix. It just, I, I absolutely can't wait to see this one. You know, it's it's one of those we already know the ending. Obviously, it's not going to be a super happy ending, but just to see he blows up the asteroid. <laughs> exactly, uh, the ship sinks. <laughs> but uh, that's one of those iconic musicians that was that was taken away just way too early. And and, and I, you're the one that was super pumped for this, right? Oh yeah. Why, why I, so much for this? Is he a hero of yours? You just like the uh, the fact that he OD'd or what? No, I mean he was so young and so talented. I mean, there's a drug addict. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you, you guys know me. I, I love the music scene and that kind of thing, and and uh, these background stories about how their rise. And that's, I, I talked about um, the one with the Four Seasons, that movie, um, Jersey Boys. Jersey Boys, and to me, that background story just wasn't that interesting. They're they were, you know, the, that whole story told their life up until they're in their sixties and seventies. With with um, Jimi Hendrix, he died at like seventeen or something like. Was no, it? he was twenty seven. Twenty. Oh wow! I thought. I'm sorry. I thought I was much younger. Oh, than that's that. a whole decade later. Yep. Boy, you were off base. <laughs> He's just making well, up what's biographies. Interesting, though, I forgot to carry the one. A lot of musicians have died at twenty seven. Oh really? A lot of them. Really? Yeah, it's it's a weird coincidence of twenty seven and musicians dying. But wow. my my point is, is that there's not a whole lot of time for less interesting things to happen. You, you're going to see a lot of rise to how he got there and some of his backstory. I, I can't wait to see it. It uh, looks so good. Am I the only one interested in it? No, I think it looks fantastic. Uh, Jimi Hendrix, yeah, I've been a fan of guitar for my entire life, and he's one of those musicians that took that instrument and, and made it do things that I don't think anyone had ever thought it could do. Mm-hmm. So to see his life story um, played out uh, in the cinema, you know, in this biopic, uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing it. And Andre 3000, he definitely looks like uh, he's taking this role very seriously and is doing his best to to carry it on. I can't wait to see it. I didn't Winger do a cover of Purple Haze? I want to hear the Winger story. Winger, yeah, Kip Winger. I want to hear his story. Well, I think it. I think it ended with a uh, with like a police department visit after they sang. You know, she's only seventeen. But... <laughs> I, I I love the story of Jimi Hendrix. I've never actually, you know, seen his life story brought brought to life. So I I'm interested in it, and I think Andre Andrew Benjamin is a really good actor. If you've seen some of the other stuff he's been in, he's actually very talented, very charismatic. I use that word. All right. Well, let's go from one type of god to another, and what could be the most epic of epicosity this year? Exodus: Gods and Kings tells the biblical story of Moses who's played by Christian Bale in a neatly coutured beard. Um, Joel Edgerton plays his longtime friend and adversary, Ramses. Uh, and basically it tells the story of Moses and his time when he basically leads the Israelite slaves out of Egypt. Uh, it's directed by Ridley Scott, who brought us movies like Gladiator, so he's got experience with these types of movies. I haven't heard too much yet on if he's changing it up like Noah, like Noah was changed or something. So I'm not real sure. Visually speaking, this looks stunning. Um, I've got some reservations about it, but I'm curious to hear about what you guys think. What about you, Justin? It looks really good. I went into watching the trailer not really expecting much because these kinds of sand and sandal movies have really dropped off over the past decade or so. Uh, I love Ridley Scott, but he, he he can be a little hit or miss. So even his name doesn't guarantee quality. 
Um, but after watching it, I really was impressed with how clean the visuals were. I mean, even the CGI stuff, it didn't it, it didn't look like they were trying to cover up things with, you know, a, a lot of dust or confusion. It, it looked really good. The actors, you know, with Christian Bale starting it off, what looked fantastic. I, I really enjoyed what I saw. And for as little as I wanted to see Noah and ended up not seeing it at all, uh, I actually wouldn't mind checking this one out because hmm. it does look that good. I like Christian Bale. And if really Scott hits the mark, uh, I like being there to see that. I like the fact that Christian Bale looks nothing like what we picture Moses looking like. From You mean like a brown person? Because well, that's that what too. I would picture. And well, then, well yeah, he doesn't too. look like, what's his name, and from the Ten Commandments. Yeah, Charles yeah, Manson. Well, Trump I don't know how. And I don't know how much um, beard grooming technology they had back then, but he's got a pretty <laughs> trimmed up beard and goatee looking thing going on. Mm -hmm. It was all clams. Mm -hmm. It was all clams. <laughs> so they shave it. He parted his beard as well. <laughs> <laughs> if he did it to the red skin, he could do it to his face. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I just seems like this, the the Bible theme movie could be the next the big as thing. As long as they don't make whatever that crap that Noah was again. And not because I don't care what they can do whatever they want with the story, just don't make it stupid. Mm -hmm. That's all I care about. I I wish they could be true to the people of the time they're representing. Yeah. That would be cool. Because I mean it's always like They got some they got some pasty white folks up in there. It's all pasty white folks. I mean, and some they always on. have had pasty white folks playing, you know, the yeah, Jews or the Greeks it, or the everybody else. I mean you gotta say What's they that? got they they should have they should have some other I don't know, shades yes. whatever you want to call yeah, them. Yeah, I agree with you. Yes, have somebody that actually represents someone in that culture. That would be that would be fantastic. But I I get it. I guess that you know, Christian Bale sells, so they got to go with him. I don't think it really matters what they do with Edgerton, but he wasn't even recognizable. With this co with this committed to his roles as he usually is, I'm kind of surprised he didn't pull a Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> Tropic Thunder. Just going the whole hog and on the dude, play the dude, play the dude. <laughs> what do you been... mean, you people? Yeah, what do you, you mean, you people? You get an Australian <laughs> to play an Egyptian. I mean, you Christian. I'm, you got Sigourney Weaver, and you've even got Aaron Paul. I yeah. don't know if you guys realize that, but Aaron Paul is in it. I I saw the name. I didn't see him in the trailer. If he's in there, I missed no, it. I didn't see Sigourney Weaver there. I saw Sigourney Weaver. They show Did her. You? She's the mom. She's really yeah. pale. Hmm. I missed yeah, it. Yeah, it's. So when the plagues come down, is he going to go, God, yo, bitch? <laughs> <laughs> yo. I hope so. And Christian Bale's going to go, I'm Moses. <laughs> That's what Get out. Let my people go. Let my people go. We're leaving. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, wrap this up. Let's get the hell oh. out of here. All right, well. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, oh, it's awesome. <laughs> Zing. All right, well, Exodus, Gods and Kings opens up December 12th, later this year. Uh, I didn't really have it. I don't know if you guys found it, but I, I didn't find a release date for Jimmy All Is By My Side, but I, it does release in the UK in on August 8th. So let us know how it is. Sounds good. All righty. Check out these trailers and a lot more at thehollywoodoutsider.com. You can text us, call us, whatever you want to do. 818-81-I'm-A-HO. That's 818-814-6246. Email us at feedback at thehollywoodoutsider.com. Go on to facebook.com forward slash thehollywoodoutsider. Like us, message us, uh, join our group. We've got a group there, so have a good time with that. Pretty interactive with that. Tweet us at h underscore outsider. And, you, of course, you can get your I'm a Ho t-shirts because they're pretty freaking awesome at <laughs> thehollywoodoutsider.com. All right. Here. Now let's go to the big screen. We review any new releases. The first one is one I was dying to see and didn't get a chance to. Deliver Us from Evil. Justin, tell us about it. All right. Well, this is the latest horror film written and directed by Scott Derrickson, who also brought us Sinister and The Exorcism of Emily Rose. It stars Eric Bana and Edgar Ramirez, as well as Olivia Munn and Sean Harris. And, strangely enough, Joel McHale, who is compl playing completely against type. It's the story of a New York police officer named Ralph Sarchi, played by Eric Bana, who investigates a series of crimes. And then he joins forces with an unconventional priest who's schooled in the rituals of exorcism to combat the possessions that are terrorizing their city. It's... 
a you know most possession movies either take place in a single structure you know like the exorcist or they take place in a small area you know somewhere removed from modernity removed from the big city uh which kind of helps create that air of isolation that you know something like a possession kind of movie needs but this one takes place right in new york city so right from the get-go you're in the middle of lots of people lots of cars concrete buildings everywhere so it, it starts off with its own unique feel though i must say it actually starts off over in i think it's iraq or afghanistan with a a, a, a really interesting opening few minutes to show where this evil initially comes from and then it moves to new york um i enjoyed the movie for the most part i mean scott derrickson is a capable writer and director and i thought eric banna and edgar ramirez were both really good olivia munn actually surprised me with just how good she was it was very it wasn't a downplayed performance but it was a very honest performance as this mother who is, you know, scared for what her child is going through, scared for what her husband is going through. And I thought she did a remarkable job showing some real acting chops. But sadly, I don't know if it's because I've seen too many horror movies and so I'm numb or if it's something else. But the scares in this really, for the most part, didn't live up to what I wanted them to be. It's There were a few moments and a couple of boo scares that got me. But for the most part... It just it didn't do for me what films like Paranormal Activity did or The Exorcist did or The Conjuring. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love The Conjuring. I thought that was a fantastic film and it did so much of what really, really works. But this one just didn't quite catch it. And I wished it had uh, because I was really looking forward to a good horror film in the middle of summer. And I kind of got just an average horror film one out of ten dollars you know if i'm feeling really really generous i'd give it a seven but in all actuality I, i'm gonna give it a six eric banna was great edgar ramirez was great other than that and olivia munn it's not much going on here that's too bad hmm. rent it maybe your experience will be different when it comes out well it'll be coming out soon because it didn't do that well but we'll, yeah. get, we'll get there uh scott we you and i both saw snow piercer finally Snowpiercer is a, is one we've been talking about quite a bit. One of our listeners got a chance to see it before we didn't and highly recommended it. Uh, the story takes place in the future where global warming has taken such a toll that the government decides to do something about it. And whatever they try to do failed and caused the world to go into a deep freeze. That sounds about right. <laughs> uh, the only survivors left live on a high-speed train built by a guy that's only known as Wilford. And the people have been split into different classes of survivors where, where the upper class live in the front. Uh, the, the cars towards the front of the train, while those less fortunate live towards the back. Uh, Curtis, who's played by Chris Evans, heads up a group of lower-class train citizens who are fed up with being treated like scum, and they basically force their way towards the engine of the train in order to make an attempt towards equality, as well as to discover what's actually going on. You find some interesting things about... Holy crap, you do. Yeah. Uh, yes. So um, I found this story really refreshing. It was original. It was a cool idea. There were some really interesting ideas throughout that really surprised me how did you feel about it it's based on a book too i don't mm -hmm. know if you knew that but i look there's people been talking about this movie for so long we've talked about it uh david mcgrath is actually the, the listener that recommended it way way back when he saw it i think like korea mm -hmm. is where he was and you know he's been raving about it we were debating if we were ever going to see the original cut because they were talking about clipping it it's not so much, hey, this is a genius story that's never been told. You know, I mean, it's basically Hunger Games on a bullet train. But it's told so clever. And it's like a, a mesh of completely different styles and tones. Um, the way that the, the – it, it's really the way that the story is told that makes the movie so good to me. Mm -hmm. It's not so much the story. I think the story is fairly – bleak and basic it's not overly convoluted right it's just it's just very interesting and it, and it moves forward and i really like how they they examine exactly you know what the diff people in different classes what their jobs really are what they're there for um and as you move throughout the train you see different aspects of those different classes of system correct like every car almost feels like a different movie to right a degree. which is so cool because you basically have a different set as they move their way up, up to the train yeah and, and, you, and you start to learn how the train works and functions and 
and how a society could actually <laughs> work in that small of a space, and you find it very believable. Yeah, because when it starts, I'll be honest, when it, even though I was really excited to see it, when it first starts and they explain what's going on, I'm like, what? This makes no sense. they got a train that goes around the world continuously for 17 years, going on its 18th year, and that's it? I mean, that's really, that's all that's left? I just didn't understand how that could happen. And they, as it goes, it makes a lot more sense. Mm-hmm. So. Well, it, it's important to note, too, like you mentioned, that this is a South Korean film, but most of the actors in it are American actors. Mm-hmm. Um, and the headliner, obviously, Chris Evans, um, I thought he did a really fantastic job. He, he's really proven that he's got a high, a very high range of ability with his, with, with his acting ability. Mm-hmm. How, did you, how did you like him in this role? Uh, he, he really took me by surprise. There's a lot of good actors. There's Jamie Bell's in here. Tilda Swinton is in here, and she's weird as, weird as fuck. Oh, but she's, she's so good. She's so good. She's kind of like a mix between every female villain of any movie you've seen in the last, like, ten years. I yeah. mean, it's, it's a really good and odd combination. I really love the character. Mm-hmm. But Chris Evans just blew me away. For all the other actors that are in the movie, he, he really surprised me. There's – and it's, I can't really tell you the, the best thing he, he did – but he has a monologue near the end of the movie that is honestly the best acting I've ever seen him do. And mm-hmm. he's really good in several movies. Go see Puncture. That's, he did a great performance in an okay movie. But that monologue that he does where he just challenges you to still see Chris Evans as Captain America, you know, mm-hmm. which I think people just walk into the movie and they just think he's Captain America. And I think by the end of the movie, you're like, okay, he's layered. He's, he's detailed. He's, there's more to him. And I really want to see him do more of this kind of stuff. I agree. The lower lower budget kind of things. And speaking of low budget, this one did have a, a, a didn't have a whole lot of money put behind it, and and it was like forty million bucks or something like that. Right, but I mean compared to some of the other bigger oh, yeah. summer blockbusters. Yeah. So, but and, and for me, I thought that was perfectly fine. I, I bought everything, every scene that I saw. I thought the money was spent in the right places, and I appreciated the creativity of the sets. Um, I, I think there were some some Eastern moments, and I say that in quotes, and I'm not saying that in a derogatory some sense. Eastern moments, East, is... like like as far as culture. Okay, there's some there were some a couple scenes in the movie that that made you feel like you were watching a movie from a different culture, which you know it's not it's not necessarily made for me, but I appreciated that that was there, even though it felt a little bit off and uncomfortable for me. Mm-hmm. But I think, like I said, it's just more of a cultural difference than than an actual flaw. What do you think? Well, it's directed by Juno Bong, who did uh, The Host, which mm-hmm. if you ever saw that, you know, you get his style. It, it's very much an Asian style, but it's also a mesh. I mean, I, I found that they were completely, they were taking an American hero with Japanese culture and, and uh, Korean culture, and it, it's really just a mesh of the styles. And the way that the, that the director handled it was fantastic. I, I just love that all the various action styles the um, character styles, all of the things just mesh into one. It works. Okay. So what's your final uh, verdict on this one? It's honestly my, my most pleasant surprise. I actually liked it more than Edge of Tomorrow. I just don't think I would watch it as frequently as Edge of Tomorrow. But it's definitely the, the sleeper surprise of the summer for me. If $10 is full price for mission, I give it $8.50. I, it, it felt like it, to me like it could be a surprise hit as well. Um, I, I hope more people will give it a, give it a chance. It, it's very accessible. It's a very accessible foreign film that I hope will bridge the gap between different cultures and future movie endeavors. Mm-hmm. I also gave it an eight fifty. All right. And Transformers, we are not going to review that bitch because it's been out forever. But real quick, what was your, what was your guys' verdict? Did, did you like it? Didn't like it? Just real quick. It was a, yeah. It was a lot of fun. It lived up. If you again, I, I said this before. If you liked the pre any of the previous Transformers, you'll like it. You'll like this a lot. If you hated them. You hate Michael Bay, you, then you're going to hate this. It's either way; it's not going to change your mind. I personally enjoy it, so I had a good time with it. Justin, I liked it. I liked it quite a bit. There was a lot to love. I think the new styles for some of the Transformers were really, really well done. CGI has never been better. Fights were incredible, but it was entirely too long. Mm-hmm. Please, Michael Bay, I love your movies, but you are getting indulgent. Knock it off. Uh, you know, one out of ten, I'd give it a seven and a half. I pretty much agree with both of what you guys said, although uh, I didn't love it nearly as much. I, I'm, but that's just because I'm not a huge Transformers fan. I enjoyed the, f- the first one, and that's about as far as I go. It's still a lot of fun, just too long. I gave it about a six fifty. I gave it the same score, Scott. Six fifty is great. The special effects are fantastic, but I feel like we've been there, done that. And if there's not going to be anything new to it. I wouldn't go see the next one probably in the theater unless they 
they really introduce something different. Something different. I think like it's cool. Earth or something. Yeah. I, if they go to Cybertron, I'm there. I'm there. Pr- midnight show, whatever it is. <laughs> but they got to do something different. Just having, you know, new hot girls walk around isn't enough. <laughs> and a new city to blow up. Exactly. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Well, now we're going to take it to London. We're going to blow London up. Yay. Now Jack Bauer well, already. Shit, there's, nothing, there. there's nothing left of Chicago, that's for sure. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Box office Transformers has conquered the world and officially became the in China. biggest film ever in China. It's actually made more than it made in the U.S. $220 million. So it took over uh, Avatar, beat Avatar. Poor James yeah, Cameron. James Cameron's pissed. He's crying in his money right now. Piles of money. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he's crying. Wiping his face off with yeah. <laughs> In America, it made $37 million in its second weekend for $175 million. It should, it'll probably clear $200 million by the time you've heard this. So it's, it's going to be okay. Nearly $600 million worldwide. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Uh, Tammy <laughs> proved Melissa McCarthy can open a movie with it on her own. $21.5 million for a $33 million total since it opened. But you guys were correct. The reviews are dismal. Just dismal. It actually got one of the lowest cinema score ratings, which is the rating where they survey people as they leave the theater mm. of, yeah. of any wide release this summer. So, ouch. Deliverance from Evil opened to uh, <laughs> $9.7 million for fourth place. So the devil can't even say that one. <laughs> and um, they should have called it Earth to Ego because it only made like $8.3 bucks. Earth Six, to what? Ego. <laughs> Eco. That, that was bad. Is that a that makes wall, no is that a sense whatsoever. Joke? No. E- is that a Wally joke? <laughs> I can't explain it. It just echo. Obviously. Should call it Earth to Do Mr. Echo because that thing died. Do we need to get hooked on phonics. <laughs> that would be better. All pictures. <laughs> Scott was funny. Should have called it Earth to Mr. Echo. Uh, yeah, eight point three million. That's a huge flop. So sorry, guys. Sorry, kids. You're yeah. Uh, where were you, kids? Your ET clone didn't work for you. You weren't seeing the dragon movie? You weren't seeing your Echo? What the hell are you seeing? They were outside. Oh. Outside? What is that? The fuck's Stop that? Stop that shit right now. <laughs> you get hurt out there. <laughs> Go inside in the summer where it's safe. All right, folks. This week we have got four films we're going to be discussing, all of them opening up on July 18th. Our first film in, in the past, I would have glibly just sidestepped it and moved on, but we've been called out a couple of times from parents wishing that we would talk about kids' movies more often and more fairly, so <clears throat> we will quickly do that. First one, Planes, Fire, and Rescue, directed by Roberts Gunaway. It features the voices of, oh my gosh, Dane Cook? Mm. This is what he's been doing? That's all he's been doing, yeah, and working uh, out. He's pumped. Well, you, you don't have to look. You don't have to look at him, so that's a good thing. <laughs> yeah, that's a very good thing. Ed Harris, Curtis Armstrong, whom some of you might remember as a Booger mm-hmm. from Revenge of the Nerds, uh, and a whole Terry Hatcher, Brad Garrett, a, a whole bunch of voice actors. When world famous air racer Dusty learns that his engine is damaged and he may never race again, he must shift gears and is launched into the world of aerial firefighting. God. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> It seems like this ten years ago would probably have just gone straight to video. It should have. But, you know, you know, don't pass, go, don't stop in theaters, just go right to direct home video. But it is coming out in theaters. I know that the planes movies and the cars movies have all been really popular with kids. So maybe this is the movie that kids will finally go in and see. I don't know, but uh, Mister Pedophile Drift yourself, <laughs> Aaron. Any interest in this at all? Oh. Is this going to be your next kid pickup place? Well, I can tell you, so. I didn't prepare for this one. I thought you were, I was hoping you'd just skip right over. <laughs> I can't do that. I cannot give short shrift oh. to our parents. Out and there. I saw the first planes. I, I trudged through it, and it's f- god awful. I don't. You don't need a sequel. Just call this movie "No" the movie. Because no, in the movie, <laughs> no, the movie. Just this, call it "Burn It Down." God, it's so no. Just no. <laughs> all right, I'm going to stop y'all there. You could because I saw the first one also, and and it's it's very bad. Like it's very yeah, it's bad. Look, you just, it, it's not exactly. Oh, it's cinema. Know, it's cinema. Changing the flipping the you know flipping the script on anything. It's, it's cinema. It's very. Yeah, it's you know what's happening from from start to finish. Yeah, I but again, and it's just cars with wings on it, basically. No, and it's I, not. At least cars had some funny jokes. 
There, there's the first one was not Plain, funny. Planes had its had its moments. It was inter- I find I found it entertaining a little bit, mostly somewhat. <laughs> Most entertaining and, part was the credits. Yeah. So and honestly, I was I got a kick out of the uh, out of the trailer for this out of Planes Fire and Rescue, and the, I'm kind of obligated to go see it because my wife is in the she's <laughs> she in is the a flight industry she yeah she is she is a flight nurse so um i have been told that we will be going to see that are you so, kidding me that that's a connection of some kind because she's a flight nurse you have to go see the planes movie just because it says fire and rescue in the title god you're just an asshole tonight aren't you <laughs> just asking a legitimate <laughs> question oh yeah all right. Yeah, because this guy, I mean, she flies in helicopters. Well, she fly, I, you know, I know what she does. And I'm that is to... a part of the rescue stuff. So, yeah, it's part of that. Like Justin said, it's part of that industry. So, and I'll be honest with you, I I chuckled a few times in the uh, in the trailer. So, I, I'm i not fighting it too much. Besides, she's probably going to go see the Apes movie with me here this weekend. And no, she now doesn't I like it. that. Now I got it. All right. Now it makes sense. I'm with you. Back on board. Scotty, so, any interest in this? Um, I di- I'll be honest. I didn't watch the trailer because I read the format. <laughs> it says we're moving on, so I didn't even bother. So, But I, I, didn't, have, I didn't have a whole lot of interest, but Brian's making me want to go back and, and look at it. What? But the, the title... No, listen. That's full of shit. No, the title sounds like a direct-to-DVD movie. It really does. I haven't. I, don't I, say I that it. because apparently it offends no, 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 rescue no. nurses. It, it has nothing to do with that. It <laughs> just sounds like a... I think there was like a Fisher Price movie or something that was like Fire and Rescue and, and that was like a direct-to-DVD. So it just automatically sounds like one. But, you know, Brian speaked my interest a little. I'll go look at the trailer, but I, I'll, I'll reserve judgment until I see it. You tell Molly I'm waiting for Michael Bay to make a real Fire and Rescue movie because that I would love to see. Because they're action heroes. Didn't they make be a that? lot of fire. I don't know about a lot of rescuing. <laughs> no, it should just be fire. Fire the movie. Yeah, well, well, Chicago's still waiting on some fire and rescue after his movie. So, All right. Well, let's all move on. Scotty, you were very lackluster about this first film, but I bet this next one's got all your geeky bits just twitching. Video Games the Movie. Now, this is a documentary written and directed by Jeremy Sneed, narrated by Sean Aston, for those of you who care who narrates it. Video Games the Movie is a feature-length documentary that aims to educate and entertain audiences about how video games are made, marketed, and consumed by looking back at gaming history and culture through the eyes of game developers, publishers, and consumers. Scott, this is your moment. (laughs) Video games is the topic. Dive Um, in, And I'm allowed to talk about it? And he can't hit you. Yeah. Aaron, sit on your hands. (laughs) Yeah, obviously, there's no surprise that I'm interested in seeing this. It, it is a documentary, and, I, and I, I hope to check it out with some gamer buddies of mine. It's one, to be perfectly honest, I wish I could watch it like on iTunes or on demand or something instead of going to the theater. It, you know, I don't need to see a documentary in the theater. You know, so um, if if that's not an option's not available, I will go check it out. It does look really interesting, but obviously, I'm a gamer, so it's interesting to me. I don't think that a lot of non-gamers are going to check it out. Uh, you know, that's, that's what people... about it? No, seriously, as a avid gamer, mm-hmm. and God, everybody knows you're avid. What what about it is so? And don't get me wrong, I want to see it too. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm just so you can tell people why it interests you. Why it, you it, it makes it. my hobby relevant because there's so many people I think seriously think that games, that video games, are still just point grabs like they were back in the arcade days and the in the Atari 2600 games, where your only point in playing the game was to rack up points and get the highest score, and that's not at all what gaming is anymore. There's there's good narratives. That's about achievements. Yeah, there's achievements. <laughs> That's why I um, play them. There there's good narratives. There's there's interesting things going on. There's uh, epic scores going on in it. Uh, sc- musical scores. There's a lot bigger things going on than than bleeps and bloops on the screen like they were back in the day. And this is one of those things that. <laughs> <laughs> So we all do the worst Mario theme ever. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the, movies like this are ones that, that it's mainstream. You see a lot of recognizable faces. Will Wheaton's in there and, and, and other, quote, geeks that are more or less, I don't know. Is he, like, required to be in every geeky thing? I'm so thing? sick of Will Wheaton. Yeah, let, let's, 
Yeah. I'm not knocking this movie. I, I just, it, he pops up in everything that's remotely geek now. Like that's all, I don't see him actually acting anymore. <laughs> what is the, what is the fascination with him? Oh, uh, he's, he's he's been anybody, a very I mean, relevant. I, I, I mean, I know culture. that Star Trek, the, he's next, Wesley Crusher. the next generation, whatever it was that he was on that, I mean, I'm sure I know that was a well-loved series, but. I, I think it started out as, honestly, I think it was a, a joke because he was kind of a, he wasn't like a great character in Star Trek. He was kind of like this, just this little kid and he became a little bit of something, but it became a joke that he became, I agree his popularity that, yeah. was like a joke. Hey, he's maximized it. Can't fault him for that. Yeah. Nope. Anyway, keep keep going. No, that's it. This this movie just more or less, like I said, solidifies and, and will explain to people why I like video games so much. But unfortunately, the people that I want to share that experience with won't see it. So you don't want to share it with me because I said I would go see it. No, I, I figured you I'm would. See. You you understand why I like games. You play games yourself. Yeah. Now, but, now I like you. To, hey, I don't want to be in that box. <laughs> no, no, I'll I'm stay not, out here in the. I'll go outside every now and again. Usually on accident for ice cream. Scotty, I do have to tell you, I feel bad for you because I have and I can't remember the last time somebody tried to make me feel bad <laughs> or immature for loving video games. You you sound like you get it on a daily basis, and I don't get that. I, I'm glad. Well, I, I leave the house, that. so. <laughs> <laughs> wow, he just ribbed you. <laughs> just messing with you. That's right. Wow, and I was really trying to be nice. <laughs> there it goes. Oh, the gloves came back so, off. fuck you. <laughs> All right, let's move on to sex tape. Oh, yeah. This is a, a tired fucking premise, but here we go. Well, I can't. How many sex tape on. movies have there been? I was about to correct myself. Road trip. It looks like a tired oh. look at this premise, but directed by Jake Kasdan, starring Jason Segal and Cameron Diaz. Segal. <laughs> oh, it's, yeah, Jason Segal. <laughs> You're a ponytail. Yeah, Segal, yeah. <laughs> look, Cameron. Bleep, bleep, bleep. Cameron Diaz. A married couple wake up to you. discover that the sex tape they made the evening before has gone missing, leading to a frantic search for its whereabouts. I like Jason Siegel a lot. I don't think I've missed a film that he's done lately, but the addition of Cameron Diaz just about kills this for me, and no trailer yet has made me even close to want to watch this film. Do any of you have an interest in this? I think the trailer yeah. pretty much is the film. <laughs> I feel like I've seen the whole movie. I don't know. Aaron? I've got, yeah, no, I've got no, I've got no, no desire at all to see this. I, it looks tired. It just looks tired. I mean, there's some people, they're definitely pointing out that Cameron Diaz is naked in the movie. I don't know if they're showing, but she's Who been, cares? no, but let me finish. That to me screams desperation because she's talking yeah. about it. To me, whenever the actress is talking about a nude scene and she did, it's almost like I have to sell the movie because the movie isn't selling itself. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's a warning sign to me. I don't think it looks funny. I think it looks tight. I'm sure there's a lot of people that are going to see it. And I liked Bad Teacher, which is the last movie they all did together. Kasdan and right. Jason Seagal <laughs> and <laughs> Cameron Diaz. Well, I, I, I really wish he did the whole movie in a whisper. That would be awesome. <laughs> Just, hey, Cameron. Cameron, let's go, uh, let's go I talk want, about it. I want this. to see a Photoshop now of Jason Siegel with with a ponytail. <laughs> Someone's doing it. <laughs> so I don't know, man. It's it's God, it's... It looks like a movie that was boring before they even made it. You know, it everything about it screams we're trying too hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's got a, a quality cast of, of sub characters in yeah. it. Rob Corddry, who always fantastic. Mm -hmm. Ellie Kemper, who I loved in Bridesmaids. I thought she was great in The Office. I liked her in Twenty Two or Twenty One Jump Street. <laughs> Rob Lowe's funny. Nat Faxon's funny. So it's got plenty of quality people. And Jason Seagal, as I've said, <laughs> is really funny. He's but great. This tra these trailers just, there's something about them that totally puts me off. And I, I, I think it's Cameron Diaz. I, it's like I don't buy her in it or something, or I don't buy them. And maybe it's just because it's a, a movie about a modern technolo technological convenience like the cloud that it kind of feels like they're just grabbing for something modern to make it to wrap a movie around. Well, and I'm sure I'm, I'm I already saw the interns and it sucked. I'm assuming 
they will explain how this could possibly happen because it isn't like you just have it on your device and it loads it to the cloud and sends it to all your family. Well, no, technically, if you have an Apple and you like put something in your uh, your iTunes directory, it does upload automatically. Well, yeah, but why would you put it in your iTunes your sex tape in your iTunes directory? Okay, let's not let's not. Okay, all right, all right, all right. Yeah, 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 yeah. it's logistics. It looks crappy uh, logistics and notwithstanding. It, yeah, yeah, I'm kind of. If yeah, I, but my my whole thing was the same thing as Aaron. If you if you're leaking out or or Ew. your biggest news thing is is hey Cameron Diaz is showing full frontal, that's that screams of desperation, and this just sounds like it's just bad, bad. You know what? Really, if, if I want to see her full frontal that bad, I'll wait till the like the day after I'll stalk her house. <laughs> Well, I'll wait till the day after it airs, and I'll find it on like Mister Skin or something like that. I mean, it's Brian's got a plan of attack. Yeah, <laughs> he's got an RSS feed. To... Yeah, <laughs> you know the Skin. the one thing that really bums me out is, and I talked about this when I reviewed the other woman, is that Cameron Diaz has always been she's been a turnoff the last few years because she kind of played the same character over and over and over. Mm-hmm. And in that movie, I thought she was finally doing something a little different. I liked her in that, and this just looks back to what she always does. So to me, it's yeah. you know. That's she was really good in Bad Teacher. Yeah, she was. She, when she tries something different, she does really well. Well, hopefully later on in this episode we'll have a better discussion about raunchy comedies. But for <laughs> now, sex tape, I ain't even written yet. Last up, The Purge, Anarchy, written and directed by James DeMonica, who I'm going to assume he did the first. He did not, but it doesn't matter. Purge, yeah, I guess it really doesn't matter. Uh, this was stars Frank Grillo, Cameron... A Joji and Zach Guilford. Yeah, there's basically Frank Gorilla is the only actor whose name I recognize, and even that's just barely. A young couple works to survive on the streets. Oh no, wait, I'm sorry. James DeMonaco did direct the first one. My bad. There you go. Well, if you like the first one, then maybe you'll like this one too, since he's in charge of it. A young couple works to survive on the streets after their car breaks down right as the annual purge. Commences now. These these films they sound like a bulimia documentary and <laughs> not uh, an actual horror film. But the per the first purge, while it wasn't great, it had some good moments in it. Uh, Brian, are you at all interested in uh, getting a little anarchy in your purge? Yeah, definitely more so than some of these others. It's I was very pleasantly surprised with the the first purge movie. And I'm curious to see where they take it from here. So definitely. What about the rest of you? I actually haven't seen the first one completion yet. It's on HBO Go, and I'm actually in the middle of it, so I haven't finished it. But from what I'm hearing, and from what I've, those that have seen the first one are telling me that the trailer looks like what they wanted the first one to be, and that intrigues me. I'm, I'm digging what I've seen so far, but I'm going to wait to finish it to to uh, really say whether or not I want to see the sequel, but the, but the trailer looks really interesting. It looks. You're going to wait till you've had the purge to completion? <laughs> yes, I'm going to wait until the stomach is empty. I absolutely concur with that. I'm the only one, I think, that saw it when it came out, and it was a really good movie, and what I wanted for like half the movie, and the other half was every thriller I've ever seen. Hmm. So, And it was all inside. I think this plot would be fantastic if it was outdoors, and you've got it like on the run, and you don't know who to trust, and... I just I like that concept a lot better. So I am I am getting more psyched for this as we get closer to it. Yeah, the newer trailers have made me a lot more excited for this than the first couple did. Mm-hmm. I will say that. Well, guys, that's it. That's our four movies. Of these four, which ones are you most likely to head out to a theater and check out? Planes, Fire and Rescue, Video Games, The Movie, Sex Tape, or The Purge Anarchy? Aaron? Purge Anarchy. Absolutely. Scotty? Video games and movie. Brian? Purge. Yeah, I got to go Purge as well. I do want to see Video Games the Movie, but I'm going to wait for a rental on that one. So the Purge wins. We'll all three be puking in our seats. Excellent. <laughs> you can listen to and subscribe on iTunes. Please uh, do that. We appreciate it. Go to your Stitcher Radio app. Give us a thumbs up if you do, or through our RSS feed at thehollywoodoutsider.com. There is a new episode every Thursday. Uh, what's this movie? What's this movie? Each week we play ours or a listener suggested clip from a movie. And if you think you know what the clip is, email us at feedback at thehollywoodoutsider.com. And next week we'll give you a proper host shout out. Last week, or two weeks, whatever it was ago, the answer was Scott. And it was the ladies' man. 
who he Ooh. likes to do it in the butt. <laughs> <laughs> Those that uh, got it correct, Sandy Koki, who was really mad that she had to she had to work for this one apparently. Uh, Amy Hutchinson, John Davenport, Lawrence Hansen, Joe Montemurro, Kristen Dew, and Pablo Meza. Congratulations to all you guys. You got it. This week, it is Brian's turn. If you think you know what it is, email us at feedback at thehollywoodoutsider.com. Here's your clip. On open ground, this guy could probably take you. But you're running through the woods, you got a chance. You're smaller and you can run through the bushes a little faster. You can duck underneath them. You know, you're like a little rabbit, okay? You're, you're woody to wabbit, okay? When you're running, think, I'm woody to wabbit, I'm woody to wabbit, okay? Stay with him. Stay right behind him until you get to the woods. When you get to the woods, pass him. Just fly by him. Don't even look in the rearview mirror. Just move, move, move. You got to be way ahead of him when you get to the edge of the woods. Because when you get out, there's a half a mile of open ground. And that's where you're going to have a lot of trouble. You got to have a hell of a lead when you get out of the woods, okay? All right. What's your name? Woody Gurner. No, it's not. It's Woody DeWabbit. Okay, Woody DeWabbit. All right. Now let's go to. There's really no TV news because it's summer. TV's off. So we will um, go to the. the oh, go to the DVD. Blue the strain starts this weekend, though. Does it start this weekend? Yes, yep, Sunday. Sunday. We will be I've already got it programmed. We will be reviewing that next week. Then you got it. Anybody okay. watching the leftovers? Not yet. Have you seen it? I've seen the yes. first episode. How yeah. was it? It's interesting. It's worth a. It's worth a look. Well, that was a deep thought. Well, I mean, I it's, check yeah, it out it, yet, but I plan on it. The uh, yeah, the first episode was one of those that there's. You know, it is trying to be real kind of mysterious and everything, and, mm-hmm. and, and I get that, and, and I'm giving it a, an honest chance. But this, I was very pleased with the second episode, and it really kind of said, okay, kind of cemented my, my interest in it. It's not one that's – don't expect a lot of action and that kind of stuff apparently, but it's still kind of, you know, uh, setting up characters and that kind of stuff. But Are there polar bears? <laughs> no, but there are um, snow zombies. Oh, cool, so, cool, cool. And um, so, yeah. All right. Well, Scott, let's go to DVD and Blu-ray. July 15th, we've got two movies and two television series. Uh, The first is Under the Skin. Uh, This is about a mysterious woman who seduces lonely men in the evening hours in Scotland. Events lead uh, lead her to begin a process of self-discovery. It stars Scarlett Johansson, and I've actually heard some really good things about that. Like she's naked. Outside of that, I've heard some really interesting things (laughs) about that. Yeah, because every other guy you know isn't thinking the same thing. We don't say it. (laughs) (laughs) Including yourself, Jackass. (laughs) Also, Rio 2. This is the sequel to the 2011 animated film Rio. It's got a voice cast of Jesse Eisenberg, Anne Hathaway, and Jamie Foxx, as well as others. First television show is Orphan Black, second season. I, I have not watched this, but my Twitter feed is blowing up People about this show. That first season was so good. I, um, I can't wait to watch the second season. I, I might check it out. A streetwise hustler is pulled into a compelling conspiracy after witnessing the suicide of a girl who looks just like her. That sounds kind of interesting. I'm going to have to check that one mm-hmm. out. And then lastly, Helen Wheels, third season. Oh, I love that show. That's a, the AMC original show centered around the construction of the Transcontinental Railroad. If you like westerns, that's a really good show to watch. Brian actually got me hooked on it. So. Mm-hmm. And that's it. So we'll move on to recasting the classics. This is where uh, every other week or so uh, we are tasked with recasting a classic film with modern actors as if it were being re- re- being redone today. Uh, one of our listeners, Steve Peterson, asked us all to recast the movie Forrest Gump. So rather than uh, one of us doing all four, we are going to each take one of the roles. Brian's going to recast Bubba. Justin's going to recast Mama. I'm going to recast Jenny, and Aaron is going to recast Lieutenant Dan. And I got then, the handicapped guy. It's basically what's going on right here. All right. <laughs> and so we'll, and then I guess we're going to each pick one for uh, Forrest Gump. Yep. So, Brian, uh, why don't you start us off with Bubba? All right. Um, I went with Anthony Anderson. Kind of a chunky fella. Can do a little <laughs> hmm. bit of comedy. Yeah, he's okay. I, I don't love him, but I, I think he's funny. He can. He can probably do it. Yeah. He, he's yeah he's he's he definitely like kind of hit or miss as far as, but it, but you know but Bubba Gump was not exactly just over the top hilarious either I mean he it was kind of a subdued comedy thing mm-hmm. so um, um, I like it sure so. Mama Next. who's what about Mama Justin uh, you know I tried looking f- <laughs> wrong wrong movie oh, uh, I went with Julia Roberts. Um, I tried to find an actress that I thought could play, you know, his mama from when he's a younger, you know, from a boy till, you know, till she's an older woman. And Julia Roberts just kind of has that face that can play a wide range of ages. And then, of course, with makeup and whatnot, they can make her look how they want. But she's a good quality actress. 
I think she could play the South fairly well. I mean, I thought she did a pretty good job in Steel Magnolias of doing that. So I went well, with she's, her. She's from Georgia, so it ain't exactly yeah. like acting. <laughs> so there you go. I like Julia Roberts, even though I'm not a big fan of a lot of her movies, but I think she's a quality actress. So there you go. I like it. Jenny, why would you give me the AIDS, Jenny? <laughs> Uh, for Jenny, I went with, uh, and I can never remember how to pronounce her name, but Malin Ackerman. Oh, from, yeah. okay. Yeah. From, um, uh, Watchmen. There you go, Watchmen, yeah. Uh, I, I'm i not a huge fan of hers for some reason, and I'm not a big fan of the character Jenny just because I was just always angry with her. Like, she just Cause screwed him a, over, yeah. so that maybe that helped. But Why does he never get the AIDS test? <laughs> so. He's immune. I thought she was. He ran it off. It's Yeah, she exactly. It's any, anybody. Agents. Anybody, anybody with leg disorders is is immune to AIDS. Science. <laughs> well, I got uh, Lieutenant Diane, um, and my pick for that was Aaron Paul. Uh, you need somebody who, who's affable and can play just brokenhearted as well as joyous, because he kind of goes through that transition throughout the entire movie. And I think Aaron Paul, through Breaking Bad, really proved that he could handle something like that. And I would like to see him in a more showcasey kind of role. <laughs> Cool. And we're all going to pick for Forrest Gump. My name for Forrest Gump. So who wants to go first? Brian? I'll go first. <laughs> Brian, um, Brian's going I couldn't, get, I couldn't get around. I couldn't get around this one guy, and I went with Jim Parsons from... Oh, uh-huh, from Big Bang Big Theory? Ba- yeah, Big Sheldon? Bang Theory. Sheldon, yeah. yep. That's a really good call, actually. Oh, I like it. Justin, can you top it? Huh. You know, the only actor that's around that, you know, that around that age that I really think has superb chops, uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Hmm. Maybe not the first face you would think of, but I think the guy can act in just about anything. I like it. Well, um, Scott wants to skip his turn. I'm going to pick and, and give it a second. Scott's sec- not ready yet. Give it a chance to sink in. Research. I'm going with Channing Tatum. What? Wait a minute. I know people are going to be like, what? That's just stupid. But if you go find his dramatic work, I think Channing Tatum could do it. I think he right. every time he does something different or against his typecast, he, he blows me away. And I think Matthew McConaughey is the easy answer, but he's too old. I think Channing Tatum's the guy. Hey, he is from Alabama. See? He's got that southern southern swag. I don't know if you can – can you run that off? And he could take his clothes off while he's doing it. <laughs> he's immune to he's immune AIDS because he was a stripper. I think that's one of the rules. Where did it beat you? In the butt talk, sir. <laughs> I'd like to see that. I'll see, that'd make a lot more up. sense if it were Channing see? Tatum. There you go. All right, let's go to our From the Outside In topic where we talk about raunchy comedies. Now, basically, it's no holds barred. If you were offended by anything, I would probably skip this because we're just going to, you know, it might come up, literally. So <laughs> we're going to talk about raunchy comedies. Wow. They are often called sex comedies. They've been around for decades, really... I don't know if you really say, did Animal House really start them, or is it more like the fraternity stuff in the 80s? What would you guys say? I would say Animal House started it. And then it just got more and more worse <laughs> as the years went on? Yeah. I don't know. It seemed to me like Porky's, at least for in my lifetime experience, Porky's was the first movie that ever came out that everybody was like, oh, my God, you are not going to go see that. <laughs> and I saw it anyway. See, I'm, that's kind of what I was thinking. But, you know, I, a lot of people said Animal House, so I didn't want to automatically. I think it's one okay. of those things like something like it, like it, it starts, but the one, um, but there's always one that, that maybe is the kind of the, the benchmark mm-hmm. later. Well, I look at it as I can't think of anything. When I was a kid, my mom let me watch Animal House, no problem. I wasn't allowed to watch Porky's, which means I needed to watch Porky's. Mm-hmm. And I did, and it's not nearly as good as people want to make it out to be. But it was something that I just felt like you had to sneak away, find a way with your friends to see that movie. So to me, that's kind of where it started, I guess. Right. Yeah, I don't know. I just I had to go back and rewatch. In preparation for this, I went back and rewatched that the Tallywhacker scene. God, that makes me laugh every time. <laughs> Tallywhacker. <laughs> he said Tallywhacker. Tallywhacker. Classy. Oh my god. Oh, uh, it's so funny because the when woman she's is trying to pull it on the penis, man. Just through well, the... that too. But I'm, but it was funnier to me seeing them sitting in that office talking about it, and the kids are cracking up laughing in the background. <laughs> the cops trying not to laugh. He finally cracks up laughing, and then the principal. Is holding the straight face for the whole time until like at the very end he just cracks up. The woman gets pissed and oh, dude, it makes me laugh so hard every time. 
Why don't we get that sketch artist in here from the police station? <laughs> Identify the incriminating mole. <laughs> it's so funny. I'm sorry, but when she was trying to pull that dick through that wall. <laughs> what, would, what, what was she going to do with it? <laughs> Who cares? We don't want to know. Who I'm cares? not going to let this slip through my fingers. <laughs> it was a glory hole before they knew what a glory hole was. Yeah, right. Oh, it's fantastic. Well, we we all know humor is subjective, but these comedies rely more on visual jokes than verbal. I, I would say most of them do. So when you watch them, how far is too far? Well, apparently I draw the line at ingesting semen. Cause <laughs> I about in, in what? Ingesting semen. Swallowing the semen? Yes. Okay. Because I, I was thought... making sure I was... You know, yeah. not gesturing semen. I am, yeah, gesturing. Like, like here's a swirly. Yeah. He said ingesting. We, I know. we all know what that word means. I just well, like to hear we it. We did. <laughs> I just like to hear it. I, I almost lost my dinner when I saw the second Jackass movie, and I know that's not a traditional movie. You know, it's a, it's that's a real. They're still life. raunchy. Yeah, they're pretty raunchy. Oh man, I, I seriously, that's like the only time I've ever come close to <laughs> throwing up in a movie theater before. Sorry. I'm twelve. <laughs> Outside of that, I'm not really bothered. Or afraid of any other topic, even if it's visual. I, I get annoyed with the overuse of, of poop. Like, Zach and Miriam make a porno came pretty close. It did. It and, was... uh, yeah. But I, I, you, you got to really, really push the envelope for me to get grossed out. Yeah, I mean, I don't really know if, if there is, for this kind of movie, if there is anything is, is too far. I mean, even cum jokes. You know, in Van Wilder... When they're filling up all of those donuts oh my God. with that bulldog's semen. Oh, I forgot and about that. These guys are eating it. It's just, <laughs> whoa, wow, this is really warm and tasty. Even it's salty. that is not too far. <laughs> I don't know. For that's a good debatable. raunchy yeah. comedy, you cannot have limits because you never know what's really going to break through <laughs> and be hysterical. And that packing those donuts he's got one he's got one broken in half and pouring it down his throat like oh, oh. man <laughs> and who even eats donuts like that they're almost smearing it all over their face i don't quite understand well, that if, one. The, if the cream inside's all tasty and warm you just want to shove that down <laughs> never had a happen with a real donut but apparently a semen donut is delicious yeah, so pee, semen whatever it's oh. it's all for me it's all game See, I'm not the same way. Bathroom humor. I Sometimes it works. I actually think the Zach and Mary scene surprised me with how funny it was. <laughs> because that I never expected. And, and, and I'm sure I everybody in the theater thought about it. Nobody thought they would go there. And then it <laughs> happened because I remember seeing that one in the theater where he pulls out and whoosh, everywhere. And the whole the whole audience just went, what? What? Because it took a second to register. Yep. Yeah, I didn't expect it. But normally like diarrhea because – I hate the like Dumb and Dumber's one. I know you guys love it. I hate that scene. Oh, that scene's so God, funny. I, I don't find scene. diarrhea scenes funny at all. There's just something. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah, but I mean, it's not so much like the diarrhea is actually funny. It's the fact that you're, that you're, I guess, you're busted. Yeah. You know, you, you, you know, you can't hold it. You've got to put it somewhere. And the only place that you can put it is a device that is broken, which means. <laughs> As soon as I walk out of here, I know I'm, you know, I'm busted. So it's. I think that's what the funny part is. I mean, yeah, but, but that's been done to death. So it, for me, it's, it's yeah, not but it's funny. not been done as well. <laughs> yeah, I'm. This, fair enough. Fair enough. This weekend, I was watching Bad Grandpa Point Five. Oh God, where they go uh, yeah, through and they show you, they show you a lot of stuff that they didn't put in the movie, and sometimes they explain why it wasn't. But one scene that they didn't put in was a scene where him as bad grandpa had this colostomy bag attached to him. And as he's getting into a whirlpool into which two other people are already in this colostomy bag slips out and then just spills shit oh. all in this whirlpool. They could not get out fast enough. Oh. and they just walk away. Oh. I, my wife and I laughed just <laughs> until we hurt. So shit. It works. How Sometimes. That, how did that not make it in there? Because they had the other shit joke, apparently. I don't know, but there's... Oh, God, and that shit scene? <laughs> that one was funny. Eats up that the side of that... <laughs> <laughs> oh, Aaron, it may be too too, too much for you, but I, I, I love a good poop well, joke. Some, some of them are funny, but it has to be something I haven't seen a hundred times. Like the diarrhea thing, 
I don't know. I think what was it? Something about Mary. All these movies have done it where I'm, I'm in there and all I got is a hand towel. All right, that joke's been done to death. I, it's just not funny to me. <laughs> but yeah, but I, Franks and Beans are Franks and Beans. <laughs> Franks and Beans. Franks and Beans. He was masturbating. <laughs> <laughs> You mean the beans above the Frank? I do the beans above the Frank. We're <laughs> just going to back the train up. <laughs> we got a bleeder. <laughs> oh, I, as, little, yeah, as little as <laughs> Scott, relatively speaking, as, as few movies as Scott has seen compared to the rest of us, whenever he breaks out with lines from an old movie, it's cra- it just makes it that much more fun. <laughs> I don't uh, like the Danny McBride stuff. And uh, I don't I don't mean just him in general. I mean like the actors or writers or direct, whatever where they have to have that movie where they just try to say the crudest thing possible just to say the crudest thing possible. Yeah. You know where they sit there and say cock come cock come, you know, and it's just like over and over and over and that's not funny. I don't find it I don't find it funny. I don't find it funny. I, I try. I don't find it funny. <laughs> I don't find it funny. Well, I don't. It, Luckily it, that's not why he's here. I find it funny the first 27 times it happens, but usually after at some point, oh, you're telling the same joke? All right. Stop being funny. <laughs> so why do you guys like these kind of movies? Why do, why do people like these kind of movies? Because they're wrong in every way, shape, or form, and we're such a PC fucking culture anymore where you can't say anything without offending everybody. Why do these movies still work? I, you know, I think... I think we've all had embarrassing moments and stuff. And I think there's a lot of these, most of these movies do have one or two scenes that remind you of maybe not. Okay. Maybe you didn't hey you didn't stick your dick through a hole in the shower and have somebody grabbing it on the other end. I've but, tried. It's not for like a train, Brian, but you know, but Hey, you, I know you, well, that's probably why you hang out at the truck stops, <laughs> but, but it's, I think there's, you know, there is, we've all had embarrassing moments. And I think a lot of that plays to that. Like there, you see a lot of these scenarios that are, that you get busted, you know, whether it's, I don't know, shaving your bush, whatever, whether it's getting caught with your pants down, you know, in front of the computer, whatever the case is. I think, I just think it, it kind of plays to that. And I, that's kind <laughs> of what it, it's just, I think it kind of strikes a chord with a lot of people out there. And the fact that it's, what's that? Well, you, when you said shaving bush, it reminded me of that scene and she's out of your league where Jay Baruchel wants to shave his pubes, but he doesn't quite know how. So his friend gets in there and does it for him. And he's all meticulous with the. <laughs> <laughs> to the See what I mean? Ooh. It reminds you of the time when, when, you know, you and your buddy were shaving your pubes. So. <laughs> and that's what I'm talking about. Oh yeah. For We've me, have all these... done that, right? Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. I'm doing it right, right. now. <laughs> Scott's. <Yeah. laughs> For me, these kind of. Why, why do you think? Why do you think? Why do you think Scott quit recording at his house? <laughs> Can't shave from there. <laughs> For me, th- this kind of comedy makes me feel like a kid. I mean, it, it, it's it's like a guilty pleasure kind of thing. It brings out the inner child. I don't know. You're you're like you're not a big dick and fart joke kind of guy. I don't want to live in a world where farts aren't funny anymore. Thank you. Yeah, like, f- farts will forever be. Hell, I teach elementary really? kids. We're it's, it's, then, huh? it's part of my job to laugh at farts. Hell, my favorite part of the day is when I get to crop dust my students and then walk away and, <laughs> and then and then watch them point and blame each other. That's like. <laughs> You make sure wow. I walk out ahead of them. Exactly, and then I watch them like blame each other from across the room, and it's like it's Got it. it's the little it's the little things that you treasure. So that that and like these kind of movies also make sex a topic that was no longer taboo. You know, I, I grew up and was basically told that sex is like this bad thing that you never talk about. It never is to be discussed. It is. You know, it's and then shameful. And then these movies that are centered around that topic, it helped you helped me to kind of realize that it's just how the world works. And, you know, <laughs> I've never jerked off a bulldog. Well, not once. Well, you ain't been living, my friend. <laughs> no, but that dachshund got a pretty good hand job, though. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, Scott's got it. Scott That's has it kind of weird, right. dog. <laughs> These are jokes aimed at the kid inside of us that laughs when grandpa farts. And points at the dog when when they <laughs> drop a deuce in the middle of the living room. 
I don't want to live in a world either where farts aren't funny, where poop's not funny, where a, a, you know, a, a sideways glance at a pair of swinging nuts ain't funny. <laughs> it just it appeals to the little kid in all of us, and especially me, because I am all about dick and fart jokes. <sighs> I mean, that's why I think I like Kevin Smith so much. He's never gotten over it either. <laughs> I want to... I want to meet a guy who's actually fucked a pie and just have a conversation. I'm, I'm sure that number has increased since 1998. <laughs> like pies were just flying off the shelves. <laughs> yeah. Somebody's like, well, how warm do we need it to be? Some poor guy puts it in the microwave yeah, and burns his dick off. That would be a very delicate balance. <laughs> One degree too hot and you are not having a good time. There's a lot of hospital visits of burnt members. <laughs> just... <laughs> I remember when when uh, something about Mary came out with a hair gel thing, uh-huh. and I I remember sitting in the audience when it happened, and at least ten girls around me asking, "Wait, what was what's what did she put in her hair? What what, no. what is that? Why is that some kind of actual gel?" And just didn't get it until like ten minutes later. Oh. I think they did that so well. They really did so well. Oh, it's that dangling goop. <laughs> Saying it from his ear. It just flew. <laughs> just flew at her. Yeah, I mean, semen really wasn't, at least as far as I remembered, it wasn't featured too often in a movie. But I, I think the first time I ever saw it used as a comedic prop was in in that film. Well, it was used in certain movies, but you couldn't, you wouldn't see it on a Friday night at the theater. Well, well. <laughs> without a triple X at the end of it, yes. <laughs> The screen dropped down for a quarter, but it only stayed up for like a minute. That sucked. <laughs> you never went to those? Oh, you're too, no. you're too young. No, you did too. I mean. You a little quarter yeah. op peep show? Oh, yeah. God, that's so gross. No. Oh, well, you're missing out. I mean, that's disgusting. People I should... had Playboy subscriptions. I was, I was good. <laughs> for like, the articles. Oh, yeah, no, hell no. I didn't even know they had articles until I was like 25. <laughs> And luckily, my mom, I was 16, and my mom didn't mind that I had that subscription, so I just put all the centerfolds up on my ceiling tacked up. <laughs> she never minded, and all my friends enjoyed it. So That explains how liberal you are. Uh, how yeah. many of your friends were all of y'all crawled up in bed together or staring at the ceiling? <laughs> hey, hey, off? hey, hey, man. If you don't look, it ain't happening. Remember that, <laughs> was it Christmas vacation where Grandma and Grandpa were staying over, and Grandpa's in the top bunk just, like, smiling up at whoever, it was, like, oh, yeah. Cla- Claudia Schiffer or something on the ceiling? <laughs> Imagine Grandpa staying at Justin's house. <laughs> it's a completely Justin, different Justin, could outfit. I sleep in your room? You'd <laughs> be crippled. <laughs> Oh wow! All right, Art's funny. Fair enough. Let's talk about your favorites. What are your? We'll just do three, two, one. So top three, top two, top top one. What is your uh, three favorite raunchy comedies of all time? Uh, for me, my my number three is Weird Science. Uh, there's not a lot of nudity in it. There's a little bit of nudity, but the entire film is based around the desire for these two guys to build a woman that will do anything and everything they possibly want her to do. And they never use her for what they should. Well, yeah, they don't use her for what they intended, but she does end up getting them the girls that they actually want. I mean, it's a John Hughes classic, and it battles with, I think, 16 Candles as my favorite John Hughes film. But Anthony Michael Hall was fantastic. Kelly LeBrock. Uh, and I think his name was like Ian Mitchell Smith or something. First time I ever saw Bill Paxton, and he just made me laugh my ass off. Uh, and even Robert Downey Jr. is in it. It's, just, it's a hysterical film. Uh, lots of uh, you know good dirty jokes. And uh, one of my favorite films of all time. For my number two slot, this. Oh one wait, I... wait, it's two, three, two, one. So it's my turn. Oh, everybody goes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, number three, there's something about Mary. That's that's number three. I, I mean, that's a classic. And I'm really surprised how well it holds up, you know. Plus, it has Brett Favre in it. <laughs> and for me, as a Packer fan, that just that seals Back the deal. when he didn't have a head of gray hair. It, I'm telling you, when I first saw him, I squeed. I, I'm like, after all the semen and everything else, I squeed. <laughs> My third favorite is really just for nostalgia reasons. We, t- we have already talked about it a little bit already, and, that, and that's Porky's. Uh, it's just... Did I, you, it's you just, just it's, drop your belt or pants or something? What, <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> God, you couldn't wait till the show was over. Uh, so Porky's, why Porky's? It's just that movie that I remember as a kid, just watching when I shouldn't have been watching. 
you know, uh, spend the night at a buddy's house and I don't know, maybe his parents had, had rented it or something like that. And of course we were staying up later and like, Ooh, what do you think about, you know, we, we'd probably watch something, some stupid scary movie or sci-fi movie or something like that. And then the parents went to bed and I was like, Hey, you know, we did get like three movies tonight on VHS, you know, or something like that. So it's just, I think it's just probably more for nostalgia reasons. It doesn't hold up at all. I, I did watch it again probably five or six years ago when it was just going, God, this is, this is bad, but it's a nostalgia thing. Okay. Scott. Uh, mine's a little more obscure, but obviously being the video game freak that I am, I, I still love grandma's boy. That movie makes me laugh no matter how many times I watch that movie. There's a, if you haven't seen this movie and you like gaming at all, you got to check it out, but there's a scene. Why does it have to do with my gaming? Just cause they, while well, they're game, they're video game testers. Right? Yeah. yeah. That's like their job. But there's a scene in the movie where he's crashing at his buddy's house who still lives with his mom. And he gets up in the middle of the night and he's super horny and he finds a Lara Croft doll and bends her over the toilet and starts masturbating <laughs> to this thing. And the dude's mom walks in just as he's climaxing. <laughs> and he turns around and he can't – he's like, I can't stop. I'm sorry. And he's just like coming all <laughs> over. And he's like, it feels so good but I can't stop. It was – oh, God. It was so funny. And then, like, later, like a couple of days later, he's talking to his buddy. He's like, dude, I need a favor. He's like, no, you can't come with my dad. <laughs> just, I'm going to have to go rewatch that. Oh, it's so funny. And I actually enjoyed the rest of the movie, too. So that was my number three. <laughs> Justin, top that. Uh, well, number two is a film that I only recently came into knowledge of. And since then, I've, I've watched it a good three or four times. Um, but it's a good old-fashioned orgy. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, that is a yeah. good one. You know, you don't get much much more raunch than an orgy. And in this one, you get not one, not one, but two really funny orgy scenes. Yeah, Jason Sudeikis, I, for me, is my real up-and-coming favorite actor. The guy, in everything I see him in, he is hysterical. And when he's given a lead like he was in this or he was in We Are the Millers, he really shines. And, I, you know, Lake Bell's lovely and fantastic. And Nick Kroll's hysterical. And Tyler Labine is another one of those go-to comedic actor guys that I just love to see on the screen. Put all of those people together about having a party that's just a good old-fashioned orgy. It's It's hysterical. It's fantastic. There is plenty of nudity in it. Uh, and a lot of sick jokes. A lot of great one-liners, too. That's a really funny movie. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, my number two, you know, may not immediately seem raunchy, but it's pretty raunchy, and that's Clerks. Hmm. I mean, you know, she basically fucks a dead guy at the end, so I think that's, that <laughs> qualifies. It's just, it's just one of those movies where it's all smart writing. 36? Hey. <laughs> In a row? Many dicks on your way <laughs> to the mall. <laughs> on the way across the parking lot. <laughs> Uh, the guy walks up. Hey, get back here! On him. What's the big deal? I love that. Oh, you were great. Wait, what? My girlfriend sucked thirty-seven dicks in a row. <laughs> <laughs> God, I love that movie. And it holds up so well. I mean, Kevin Smith—that's the best Kevin Smith has been ever in his career, and I think that's that's a, a testament to to his skills because he's had a lot of funny ass comedies but man that was so fucking funny Olaf metal <laughs> so, you sucking talk berserker berserker, berserker. <laughs> Brian what's your number two uh, my number two is uh, I, I didn't appreciate this movie the first time I watched it because I watched it with I, I unknowingly I heard about how funny it was but I never heard details uh I watched this movie for the first time with my parents and my grandmother, and that was the 40 year old virgin. Oh, <laughs> shit. Yeah, nobody kind of warned me, like, hey, this might. <laughs> you know how I know you're gay? Oh, you like that that? awkward watching one of these movies, especially when you were a kid, when your parents were sitting right next to you. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah. Especially yeah. if your grandma, apparently. Brian brings his grandma over to watch this. I mean, it's called the 40 year old well, virgin. Yeah, but I didn't know. I mean, I didn't know. You didn't know there was gonna. You didn't know there was gonna be a little Indian guy talking about rusty trombone and. <laughs> okay, that's dirty Mexican. Dirty Sanchez. <laughs> it still sounds Mexican. I just, you know, like I, like I said, I, I'd heard it was funny. You <laughs> that's know, awesome. I just didn't realize to what it, you know, what exactly type of humor it was. So, 
Yeah. So anyway, it, did, it wasn't until probably the second time I watched it till I, I started appreciating it and uh, just cracked up and watched it a few times over the next couple of years or so. So yeah, 40 year old virgin, my number two. Good pick, man. Scott? <laughs> Uh, my number two is a movie that was very fitting for me because I think it was the right age when this movie came out, and uh, that's American Pie. We've talked about that. That I, I was in high school. When there are parts of the movie that are absolutely hilarious. Yeah, it really is, and it's just, it's just, I don't know. We, we talked about when American, the the latest American Pie movie came out. Was it Reunion? Mm-hmm. I think, and it was just such a good callback to the original, and I just have such nostalgic feelings for that one. And yeah, there's a guy that does a pie in that movie and that's not even like the best he gets part of it in it i mean he's like i mean he fucks well, it. Depends on which, fuck the pie fuck the pie yeah it, depends on which version you see because there's one yeah, where he's yeah, like on top the, of the counter the like, r-rated one's kind of lame it's just like you know that's just like in his where he just lay and pipe yeah that pie. <laughs> where he's just on top of the counter and he's just fucking it and, and that's he's like this pie's my bitch poor jason biggs like he's like forever gonna be the guy that fucked a pie i mean like He's yeah, an orange is the new black. Things and... that he saddled with. <laughs> Not many. That's pretty up there. Yeah. But I don't didn't think... that movie really kind of seem to to bring back the raunchy? Yeah. It did. It did. Comedy because yeah. there were, it was a pretty you know pardon the pun dry spell for a while with raunchy sex comedies and this one came out and it was just the tip of the iceberg. I think it proved to Hollywood that people want those movies again and we've been getting tons of them ever since. Mm-hmm. I mean, you, all I had to do was say this one time at band camp, and everybody just mm-hmm. <laughs> stuck a flute in my pussy. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> say my name, bitch. Can, every Buffy the Vampire Slayer fan was like, what just happened? <laughs> <laughs> what did Willow just say? <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe she just said that. I couldn't, wa- I couldn't look at her the same for a while. So Justin, what's your number one? You know, I got to go back to the Kevin Smith over here, but for me, Zach and Mary make a porno is my favorite filthy comedy of all time. We've already talked about the uh, shit scene <laughs> where that uh, where that guy gets frosted with a heaping helping of poo. The cameraman. I mean, yeah, the Elizabeth Banks and Seth Rogen were so good. They were. In portraying these two aging people that didn't want to move, you know, to grow up and Ke- Craig Robinson was fantastic in it. <laughs> But really, Bubbles. for me, the people who steal the show, and it was early on, but Justin Long and Brandon Routh. Oh, yeah, they were so In good. the actual reunion scene where you know we find out Brandon Routh, who Elizabeth Banks' character has been crushing on for years, find out, oh, yeah, he's gay, and his boyfriend, Justin Long, is a porn star. <laughs> it's hysterical, the, <laughs> the conversation they have. But I do. I laugh from beginning to end. It's It's such a good movie. I hate that it didn't do as well as it should have. But damn it, I've got it on just about every format I can, just so I'll never lose uh, lose it. It's I love it. The Dutch rudder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, you grab your cock, and somebody else grabs your elbow and moves your hand, moves your arm for you. Who didn't leave that theater looking at a friend going, "We could probably do that." <laughs> we do a double Dutch rudder, you know. Where you... <laughs> Jason, or was it Jason Muse? Yeah, it was Jason just, Muse. Like, that was one of the funniest things I've ever seen him in. I mean, uh, I thought that was so much funnier than Jay and Silent Bob, just mm-hmm. just because he was different. And Tyler mm. Levine even had a, a like a two minute part in that one too. Yeah, he did. My number one is Bachelor Party. I mean, it's an old one. Tom oh, Hanks. it's been so long. Oh, I forgot I, about that. I love Tom Hanks in that movie. That's back when Tom Hanks just. He was funny as shit. It was before he was a Tom Hanks actor. Mm-hmm. And everything about that movie just cracked me up. I mean, his re- his his comebacks were funny. It's like every guy's what you want your bachelor party to be, but nobody ever actually has one that cool. That's what I wanted Vegas Tawny to be. Katane. He's marrying Tawny Katane before she turned into a Ooh. whatever she is now. I mean, she you know she was like. It in the eighties. Here, here I go again. That here, video. Yeah, how many Holy times are we gonna watch smokes. that? Her sliding off the car. They still mimic that. Hell, you were talking about bad teacher. They mimic that and that. Mm-hmm. So I mean, you know, oh, she was something. But then movie, not, <laughs> it just cracks me up. Just let's not forget Nick the Dick. <laughs> They'll call you Nick or Mister Dick. <laughs> Nick. <laughs> well, go, well, how long is it? He pulls it out. You just hear plop. <laughs> you just hear the thump. and they're all like. That is amazing. And every they seem like real friends. They seem like a bunch of guys that actually would be hanging out. I mean, I just that movie. That movie's oh, freaking hysterical. That donkey Odin. <laughs> oh, 
shit. Now I gotta look that up. I gotta watch that again. Oh, Is it on Netflix? I gotta, I oh. one. You've, you've never seen it? I think I saw part. I had most of it. Oh yeah. man, Bachelor Party is great. Yeah, it's so good. Brian, number one. All right, this one is I'm not one of those. It's one of those questionable ones, but I went with it anyway, and that's waiting. Oh no, I think it counts. Yeah, yeah that definitely counts because <laughs> it's. I mean, it's it's not. Yeah, it's not a whole lot of tits and ass and gratuitous, you know, <laughs> sex and that kind of stuff. But but the the jokes in there are hilarious. Very very much in the dick and fart category, what especially is with the. Uh, it's what? so angry. Why is it so angry? <laughs> what is it he does with the balls? What is, what is that called? There's a whole bunch of them. The There's bat a whole wing bunch of or... the bat wing. There's the Abraham Lincoln, the goat. I mean. The goat was the, the, goat. Was the winner one, wasn't it? Yeah, it was the goat. Yeah. But you got to shave it so it looks like a beard. Otherwise, it don't count. You know? <laughs> No, my favorite part about that movie wasn't even wasn't even a gross up part. Was that the one dude didn't speak the entire movie? Every time he tried to talk, he got cut off. Nobody let him talk yeah, yeah, until he yeah. went off at the very end. I just thought that was so funny. And he finally did the goat. <laughs> oh god, that movie! That movie made me not want to go out and eat. Yeah, for, for a like a time. long time. Still doesn't. Absolutely. Oh. And I I personally thought that was funny because I mean that's that movie came out in two thousand five. Mm-hmm. Literally. Ten years before that, a guy I used to be stationed with would go around doing the the brain. Oh, <laughs> oh, the brain. Yeah. So I, I, I kind of felt gum. like I was a little bit ahead of my time there, so to speak, whenever I saw that movie. Like, oh, yeah, I've seen that. <laughs> so. Wow. What about you, Scott? Uh, my number one, you already mentioned, there's something about Mary. Uh, to me, I have never laughed so hard in a theater as I did the first time I saw something about Mary because I was not expecting – Half of the stuff that happened in that movie, I mean, they got away with so much. It made everybody afraid of rest stops too. Oh yeah, yeah, it's just peeing. <laughs> <laughs> just so many quotable lines, so many visual things that like you just didn't expect to see, and they gave speed to the little dog, and he went nuts. I just, oh so god, funny. so funny. The dude was obsessed with her at the end, and then Brett Favre, and it just, it just, it just Brett Favre. Just nonstop. The, uh, you could not make that movie today. And get I don't think it. you could make most of uh, a lot of them today. Yeah. Oh, so uh, funny. You sure can make Brent Blazing Saddles today. That's for sure. <laughs> but my is real that... passion, uh, my, my real passion is what, is my job. What's that? I work with <laughs> retards. <laughs> <laughs> like the most... Crazy little bastard. <laughs> we got this Sadly, one kid Bachelor named Mongo. Is not available. What's that? Bachelor Party is not on Netflix. It is not on iTunes. Oh. It's it looks like it may be on Hulu, but only I think if you watch it on the on your computer. The only place I can see it is if you want to get it on Blu-ray, and I may have to break down and buy it. <laughs> it's worth it. I got it. Amazon's got it for twelve twenty-two. The well, pitch and I pass it around. There you go. What is? Uh, let's do the listeners, uh, and we had to limit it to just one pick, guys. Sorry, but go ahead. Uh, Angela Lee says Super Troopers. Mm, good. I gotta say, that's a pretty good pick. Yeah, would you watch that right, Meow? <laughs> meow, what's going on? <laughs> Are you saying Meow? Am I a cat? Am I, am am I, I drinking jumping, milk from nimbly, a saucer? Am I jumping nimbly bimbly from tree to tree? <laughs> and the best part is you see the dude's belly as he's laughing. You can't see the top, you can't half, see the top of 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 yeah. Oh, man, that is so funny when they're shooting him with that uh, bulletproof... Cup. <laughs> yeah, no. No, thank you. Oh, yeah, Super Troopers is a great comedy. <laughs> uh, D.A. Cheney says Bridesmaids. Oh, good, good pick. When Amy Hudson says American Pie. Oh, Steve sorry. Peterson. Um, well, we're just cutting everybody off. We're just cutting each other yep. off, left and right. Horrible audio we're doing. <laughs> Steve Peterson says my all-time favorite is I Love You, Man. Paul Rudd is probably my favorite actor in that genre, and Jason Segal, as I'm going to continue to call him, is a very close second. Everything about that movie was spectacular. Slap at the base. This is my nightmare. That's the movie I got to take Zach to, the premiere of. Oh, yeah. Remember? We got to meet uh, Paul Rudd and Jason Segal. Oh, that's Just right. a drop, right. just a name drop, because I can. Return the favor. Well, I met Jason Segal. What's that? You want to pick that up? <laughs> nope. You're going to leave it right there on the floor. Is that the Return the Favor movie? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> return the favor. Yeah, return the favor. <laughs> uh, Robert John Davenport says, not sure if it's raunchy, but me, myself, and Irene holds a special place. I love that movie. 
Yeah, and he was debating if that's raunchy. Dude, at one point, he's slapping dildos. or <laughs> <laughs> He had a dildo up his ass, theoretically. He's sitting on the sink washing his, like, yes. trying to rinse water up his ass. I'm pretty sure that's it raunchy. Counts. It counts. You had fun, didn't you? Yeah, my son Billy got the lady in the school musical. Well, I guess he likes the, the cock after all. <laughs> Can I tell you real quick with that movie? The first time I saw it, that dildo scene, I haven't laughed that hard. I hadn't laughed that hard in years. I I, almost, I I had it spewing out of my nose. I was, oh, God, that was so funny. He stands up to pee and it, like, hits the wall. <laughs> That's what I got to watch again. All right, what else we got? Uh, Respin, it says, there's something about Mary. Good, Sean McGuire mentions Porky's. Yeah. Dan Miranda says, agree with most of the ones listed, but Hot Tub Time Machine holds a special place in my heart. Nice pick. It is a good pick. I, I wish I loved it as much as I want to. Same and here. Sadly, I, I, I do think that it's um, the lead actor. Jesus Christ. John um, Cusack. There you go. He kind of pulls it down for me because he's not nearly as funny as the rest of them well, are. He won't but be it's in still the sequel. He won't be in the sequels. So that might help you. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, Kelly Nelson says Bucky Larson. <laughs> have you ever seen it? You should look it up. I have seen it. I, yeah. Uh, Stephen White says Forgetting Sarah Marshall. Oh, good pick. That oh. almost made my list. That movie is really hysterical. I love that movie. When he's having a conversation with his dick hanging out, I'm <laughs> <it's> like... <laughs> or any scene, basically, with, with Russ is hysterical. Oh, yeah. If you great. if you watch the, the bonus features, all, like, all the stuff that he ad-libbed to just to come fantastic. up. It's fantastic. It's so funny. Oh, so funny. He's a funny guy. Josh Steima says, Jay and Silent Bob strike back. Excellent choice. <laughs> yeah. Cock knocker. Kevin Smith is, is really... He was a standard bearer for a while of good raunchy comedies. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what the fuck is the internet? <laughs> <laughs> or where they beat up the kids at the end. Oh, God, I love that. I haven't seen that in forever. Please I gave you my signed copy of that. looking motherfuckers man. right here. <laughs> uh, Scott Calgaro says, Animal House is the standard for this genre. Was it over when the Germans bombed Pearl Harbor? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is a great movie. Dustin Jolman says Mall Rats. Oh, uh, one of my one of my favorite Kevin Smith movies. Yeah, good pick. Underrated yep. too. Douglas Clayton says, "Get him to the Greek." Laughed my arse <laughs> off. Feel the wall. Feel the wall. <laughs> <laughs> and lastly, Jason Taylor says Hollywood Nights. Hmm. I don't know that one. I don't either. That's an interesting pick. He actually had several, but like I said, we had to limit it to their first one. So, mm-hmm. all good picks, man. All good picks. We had a lot of the same ones and a lot of different ones. So that's good. Um, and remember, you can like us on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash The Hollywood Outsider. We added a bunch since our last one. Kathy Harris, Cheryl Boyd, Ramon Zermena, Zerme, Zermeno. Uh, if you have a name of any kind of foreign descent, you're going to have to explain it because I suck at names. <laughs> Jeremy Peterman, uh, Deborah Fernandez, Angel, Angelica Martinez, Monique Brewer. I'm almost intentionally fucking these up at this point. Jeremiah Ross Benton, Kelly Nelson, Chandra Ulmer. Jason Thibodeau. No, Thibodeau. Thibodeau. It's, Thibodeau. it's French. Oh, God. It's actually Creole. But yeah, so Thibodeau. he sounds like a crab little, when he talks? Cool is that what you're telling me? Do what? He sounds like a little mermaid crab when he talks? That's how you think everybody that's <laughs> French speaks? Sacre bleu. What is this? <laughs> and Marvin Sewell. Zuta, no. So thank you all. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for liking us. And if you like us on Facebook, we'll mention you on next week's show. We do have a Hollywood Outsider Facebook group that's for movie and TV fans of all kinds, or you can post and talk to. We, uh, we've got a lot of people on there, and they seem to be having fun, and it's not just about the show. So do go there and enjoy. we got a couple emails, and we'll wrap her up. Justin? Got one here from Amy Hutchison. She says, Aaron asked why people are so freaked out by these movies. I think whether you are religious or not, the idea that it could actually happen, and she's talking about possession, Mm -hmm. to someone is the terrifying part. I think everyone who sits and watches a movie like that questions how they would feel if it happened to them or to someone they know. For me personally, demonic possession doesn't scare me nearly as much as hauntings in general. Ghosts or evil spirits haunting your house, hearing noises when you go to bed, the feeling someone might be there, things like that, even if it's not to harm you. Harming you is a million times worse. Just mm. the thought of a spirit not moving on and being in your home 
It is it it is completely horrifying to me. That's why I would agree with Brian about paranormal activity. The demonic possession part when he takes over her body towards the end didn't freak me out as much as all the things that happened prior to that. I do think those movies get redonkulous, but the last one gave me nightmares the first couple times I saw it. I also agree about the omen. I think it's overlooked a bit when talking about demonic possession, and I think it's scarier than the exorcist. Whoa! Mm. Simba down now. Hey. I agree with that. I like both, but favor the omen. Thanks, guys. Amy Hutchison. I'm with you, Amy, because I didn't like The Exorcist. So, well, well, you're not exactly with her because she said she liked both, but I didn't like it more than the omen. So we are we're together. We're simpatico. You shut up, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, shut up or read? Shut up or read? Which one? I just do both at the same time. All right. If Shut your mouth when you're talking to me. How's I gonna how's <laughs> I gonna get the money? But if I'm getting the money, how could I be frozen? <laughs> Fuck what was that? It was that raising Arizona? I don't know. Brian Reed. <laughs> <laughs> and we lost Brian. And we'll come oh back to Brian. God. Scott do All, right. <laughs> All right, well Sabrina Elkins says, I'm pretty sure you guys just had Thanksgiving and Christmas off. So this quote unquote deserving of time off is venturing into the land of sheer laziness, sir. Unaccept a hoe. <laughs> I just love that. <laughs> oh, we also good. got one from John Davenport. He says, thanks again for the great distraction this week. Predator movie. It would be neat if we saw the story of what happened before Dutch and his team landed to rescue the team they were called in to rescue. But the reveal would have to be a total surprise ending with the entire other team dead. The Predator cleaning some skulls. Then you see the choppers with a clear shot of Dutch sitting in the doorway of the chopper as they approach the area, as in the start of the first movie. I like that. Ready Player One? Yes, please. Though I would be amazed if they managed to pull everything off in this movie simply because there is a lot to cross over with a lot of different IP in the universe. The entire book is essentially one long jerk-off session with all your favorite pop culture icons from the 70s, 80s, and 90s, and today. (laughs) And maybe... (laughs) Great job, Scott. And maybe, <laughs> and maybe a little into the aughts. I don't know how it will retain this charm in movie form. John I'll buy Danaport. that shit for nineteen ninety five. <laughs> oh god! All right, guys, well, we've had a lot of fun, and if you've been offended, I don't care. But you can <laughs> stay through the credits for outtakes. I don't like your jerk off name. I don't like your jerk off face. I don't like your jerk off behavior, <laughs> and I don't like you, jerk off. <laughs> Go to the Hollywood Outsider dot so random. The Hollywood Outsider dot com. Tweet us at H underscore Outsider. Leave us a message or text us eight one eight eight one four six two four six. You can also uh, listen and subscribe on iTunes. Please do leave a review. Listen on your Stitcher Radio app or through our RSS feed. Our email once again is feedback at the Hollywood Outsider dot com. That's gonna do it for this episode of the Ho. Thanks, guys. Justin, Brian, and Scotty. That was a lot of Yay. fun, man. That was a lot of fun. That was a lot, lot of more fun. fun than talking about possession. Yeah. We should mix the two. Demonic possession comedies. Can you... <laughs> oh no, then we get repossessed and that oh, was shit. awful. And then we just be... get a bunch of shitty Wayans movies. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it's all Wayans. All the time. All right, well we'll have to do comedies more often. That was a lot of fun. Uh, and remember guys, the next time you go to a theater, sneak in a Diet Coke and buy popcorn. <laughs> and farts are still funny. <laughs> Who even has those? I have a Vita. God, what is with your shut the fuck up? Fucking chair. Shut the fuck up. Are you a homeless man? What is the? I'll be looking tomorrow for another chair. Jesus. Good lord, man. I've just worn it out. (laughs) He's got a springboard chair. It's crying. (laughs) Please stop. (laughs) It says I give up. I give up. Yep, ready to go. You want to get any last squeaks out or anything? Or all right, we're good. I swear good. it sounds like you're fucking in that chair. I swear to God, it does. Chair probably thinks that too at this point. <laughs> <laughs>